True so, story. Yeah, no, yeah, it's hard to drive your your standard dumpster fires. <laughs> Garbage can. Yep, and... Ben Lorry. Is yeah. that, <laughs> is like, that is we... the, it always comes back to that. Always does that in uh, Silence of the Lambs. Although we totally get the Silence of the Lambs oh moment. God. Oh, dude. It was the whole season I've been waiting for it and they gave me it. Yeah. And it was shit. <laughs> uh, but we'll get, we'll get that. We'll get that. Let's not be a Yeah. All right. Welcome, everyone, to another episode oh, of Duncan and Bo Come Correct. This time around, of course, uh, is Duncan and Bo Slash Fiction, which is mm-hmm. our ongoing look at the Slasher television series. And uh, it has been uh, quite a journey. We've reached the penultimate episode, which is episode seven. And it's been 80, 40 years ago. <laughs> it's, yes, it, it seems to. It feels like we've been watching Slasher as long as we've been in quarantine. Yeah, it really, really does feel like. I mean, that's, that's how you make your quarantine miserable. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. <laughs> you're on lockdown you can't do anything that you were used to doing beforehand oh and by the way the only show you can watch is slasher yeah that's some kind of purgatory conversely though uh and i think i've, I've probably used this joke before but if you are diagnosed with a terminal illness sit yourself down in front of slasher because <laughs> it'll it'll make every minute seem like an eternity <laughs> so you know uh there's that um, so we're we're talking about the uh, this show. We've got one episode left, which will be uh, two weeks from now, of course. And mm-hmm. then I think we have discussed uh, taking. Yeah, we're we're going to take an episode where we do something that's a little bit different, and and not slasher, and and then we will get into the second season. Uh, of season this thing. two. Uh... Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it, it, but this all roads lead lead to Cronenberg. That's what we have to keep reminding ourselves of. They do. Is that at the end of of this, no matter how bad this journey is, we are going to reach a point where we are going to be served up uh, a tasty helping of David Cronenberg. And I think tasty thirty second cameo from David Cronenberg. I swear to Christ, Duncan, if it's just him walking on and being like, mm-hmm, "I like what you've done with this place." carry on and then just turns around and leaves yeah we'll burn it down yeah we will i will i will blow up netflix (laughs) me and you will be on the first fucking flights that we can get post like vaccination all the way to canada and we're gonna hunt us and we're gonna hunt the showrunners down yeah take them out we're gonna we're gonna find jim slasher (laughs) what did what did you do what did you do um <laughs> shaking him yeah oh, no, he can't answer because he's been shook so violently I'm a, oh, no, no, you're fucking that's not a question right right by the end of it his brain's just jello like yeah yeah you fucked it up duncan he'll never be able to answer us now yeah we're gonna so, shake him like camera footage taken from a nanny cam of an opiate abusing a child um you know you've read those stories I, I have, but that was very specific, Duncan. <laughs> I was trying to think of things that, like, sh- like you shake someone into a, a coma, and that was the only the only thing that came to mind. Um, which I, I listen to too much true crime podcasts. I need to stop that. Yeah, to you stop probably that yeah. With humans. <laughs> yeah, if, if shaking babies is your default at this point. <laughs> Um, but Duncan, before we get into any any more discussion discussion of slasher, I would like to uh, to first thank everybody for for joining us uh, both in the live and and pre recorded versions of the show. It has been a, a lot of fun and very silly. Somebody, uh, I think it, it might have been uh, the Ram Man himself who pointed out that uh, in in one discussion we <laughs> we shifted very quickly. From the importance of of the Dutch film movement during the silent era, mm-hmm. and uh, followed that quick on the heels of a uh, talk of someone's strange looking nipples. It's so, edutainment. Yes. So you know the the point is that we <laughs> offer a little bit of everything to everybody, and in that way we're much like Jim Jones of People's Temple. Uh. So you know, <laughs> sign over your house, I guess. 
Yeah, why not? He seems uh, trustworthy. <laughs> yeah, don't I? Despite <laughs> despite the slander that came my way via Jamie Sammons. <laughs> was it slander? It was slanderous. <laughs> uh, look, my lawyers are looking into the exact definition. <laughs> but I don't I can't I, I'm not at liberty to talk about it right now. Yeah. Um <laughs> Bo went partially Trumpy in there where he was just like, I'm gonna sue. But, he, but they might not have done it. Sue, sue. Look, I know good poetry. I have the best poetry. That is that is bad poetry. Everyone is saying it. Um anyway, what I was saying, Duncan. What were you saying, Bo? Uh was that uh before we get into that, we like to start the show with a look at what we've been watching. One good, one bad. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm very enthusiastic about my good this week, but uh, why don't you start us off? What, what's what's tickling your pickle? <laughs> Did, oh dear, I don't know where this conversation's going. Um, <laughs> it's really obscure hentai, apparently. Yeah, um, yeah. Well, I was watching we, Little Legend of the Overfiend as it happens, and <laughs> and now I'll never be the same. I just can't look at an octopus the same way again. Um... I'm trying to think, because uh, I have the thing. The weird thing is, I've been watching a ton of stuff, but not all of it is necessarily new stuff. You know what I mean? I'm, I've been kind of working my way through a ton of screeners that I got of newer films for sure, but uh, you know, a lot of mostly older stuff for podcast prep. I'll tell you what I will lean into in terms of the good, because I do think it is a surprisingly good movie that is held up on repeat viewings. And when I watched it first time, I enjoyed it and thought, eh, you know, when I come back to this, it's, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to look, look at it from an opinion of being overly critical and, and probably, probably rubbishing it. But um, I've just dropped an episode today looking at Horns, the 2013 Alexander Aja adaptation mm-hmm. of the Joe Hill uh, novel. And like, I remember when that got, that got released at Halloween and I remember that year it was, I, I, there, there couldn't have been a, like a paranormal activity or a saw because all the ads were about horns. If there's one movie that you see this year, it must be horns. Harry Potter has horns. <laughs> Harry Potter has the horn. Oh, no, I don't want to see that. <laughs> the wizard who lived is now the devil who fucks. <laughs> now see, I would <laughs> I would watch that in a heart. Right? Uh, I would watch that. Uh, Harry Potter After Dark, give me it. Um, yeah, it, the thing about it was, it, it was horribly marketed. Well, I mean, we can all say that now. Definitely not a horror movie. It's more a fantasy movie. It's more. It has more in common with a kind of weird Brundlefly kind of Guillermo del Toro meets Twilight than it necessarily does with you know, Satan, you know, or anything like that. But um, what I found interesting about it is when I watched it at the time, I found uh, it like definitely tonally inconsistent, but at the same time, it was just a, a absorbing two hours. I didn't feel a second of its runtime. And I enjoyed the story. And it's, a, you know, it's, it's, it is what it is. And I enjoyed it at the time. I've watched it twice since then. So I watched it once a couple of years ago and thoroughly enjoyed it watching it this time with a critical eye for the show that I was doing, um, I'm still on that train. I think it's a very, very well put together movie, which has good acting. I, I mean, Daniel Radcliffe isn't the actor that you necessarily would think of for a role like that, but I think he actually does it really well. It's particularly the comedies, comedic timing's really good. Um, uh, and when it gets gnarly, it gets kind of gnarly. I think it's just one of those oddities where a studio decided they wanted to make the movie and they wanted to have Harry Potter in it and then they had not a fucking clue what to do with that kind of post or what market they should be aiming at. So horror, obviously. I mean, because Joe Hill, son of Stephen King, so horror. Um, right, and it's, you know, the, the premise itself seems kind of supernatural and fantastic and whatnot. Yeah, a little bit. I mean, there's, there's, a, there's, there's a bit of, yeah, I, yeah, certainly supernatural, I, supernatural and fantastical. I don't, I don't necessarily think, I don't think horror, right, like, at all. But at the same time, though, I can see why it ended up there. I just, 
Like I say, I just remember that marketing campaign, specifically the window they wanted to release, all those things set up a false equivalency for the viewing experience. But if you remove it from that, the viewing experience is, I mean, I think it might be Azure's best shot movie. I think it's like it's a, cinematography is stunning. Um, I think the score's really good. I think the acting's pretty good. Um, not from everyone in the movie, but they've got some, some pretty powerful performances in there. The score, um, whether it's the Rob um, OST score or just the soundtrack in general was bitching. And like I say, it absorbs my time. There's some nods to David Lynch in there, a little bit of Twin Peaks reference. Annie shows up as a, as a waitress in a diner for just one scene. Um, I, I, I appreciate that. You know, there's part of me that's like, that's cool as fuck. Well played. Um, right. So <laughs> I, I doff my cap to you, sir. Because uh, you can see it's so transparent, like because it's it's a, you know the, the diner, the outfit, the way it just it's so clearly just a, a nod to Twin Peaks, and I'm like, yeah, that's cool. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's not a, it's not a masterpiece by any stretch of the imagination. It's not Azure's best movie by any stretch of the imagination. But ho- that is a movie that I genuinely thought would fall off with diminishing returns on a second and third watch, and it's held. It's he- it's surprisingly held in a way that I would not have given it credit for when I w- watched it for the first time. So that is my thoughts on Horns, which will it, be my good this week, I uh, think. Okay, yeah, I was just making sure that was the good. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, no, it sounded like it. bad, so. Yeah. Um, you know, I've never seen Horns. What what years did you draw in the summer series? Uh, 2017 summer? and... 2019 maybe oh well you never will then Bolt. <laughs> you don't have a lot of faith that it's moving forward no I, it's a movie that I, I i felt like uh i i need to watch in fact i feel like it was i had this conversation with kate pollock recently mm. about having not seen the movie horns she's on that episode so i that would make yes sense. i th- synergy brand synergy that's what i was bringing <laughs> to the show uh once more so Every now and again, Duncan, I like to give you my my cold uh, locks for entertainment. You want right? to say I like to give you my cold stew. I like to uh, I like to give you the cold nice. shoulder. I like to give you some cold stone creamery. Uh, no, a I like stone, to give you some stone cold Steve Austin. Uh, a for stone no cold stunner. <laughs> I like to, nowhere. I, I like to give you a lyrical stone stone cold stunner. <laughs> a skate stunner out of nowhere. What's yeah. he doing? <laughs> so. <laughs> oh my god a scalp stutter out of nowhere oh that guy's got a family where's the referee oh <laughs> uh, <laughs> he broke it in half so anyway just in time this show gets real dumb um mm-hmm. <laughs> this is the stone cold log like you know when i when i told you hey you really need to see nomad land like that's a movie that Dude. you you really need to watch that movie you did tell me that, and, and I will as soon as I can get my hands on it. Not giving you a hard time about it. I'm just saying, like, that is a movie when you watch it, you're going to be like, God damn, that's I a- still don't think it's officially out here. I need to do some research, but I, I still, I've got a sneaky suspicion it's not been formally released in the UK. I so... can't speak to the film laws of the UK, Duncan. <laughs> oh. But. <laughs> See that there, listeners? That's what you call a diversion. <laughs> <laughs> so. It, over here in the states, where life is America, good, God damn it. yeah, where where everyone is vaccinated now. Um, <laughs> it, over well, here, how, how's that going? By the way, how's actually, your... pretty well. Like you're, it's at this point, kind of. If you want to get a vaccination, you can get on the schedule for one, and we're on track to, for pretty much it. by summer. Everyone who wants one will have had one. Uh, we're, we're about the same. We are sitting. I think it's forty percent in Scotland. I don't know so. that we're that high, but like every day has gotten progressively better. Like the That's rollout good. has really turned around, and uh, yeah, no, it's like I'm, I'm having my second shot pretty soon, and I I couldn't be happier. You know, it's great to to think like, oh, we're all. Come, come summertime, I'm going to be able to sit down in the movies again, and that's going to be... I'll be able to go and lick someone's face, is that what you're thinking? Yeah, yeah. I, I, no, it's I'm going to be able to see Dune in IMAX. I know, you know, I know, I know. And and I was really heartbroken. Like, I, I'm not crazy about the theater experience these days, mm-hmm. but I really don't want to watch Dune at home. I've got a big oh, screen no, no, that's and all. A, that is the cinema, that is yeah. the massive IMAX cinema experience you have uh, to have. And I'm, I'm not... 
Eh, we'll see how things go for uh, Kong. Um, anyway, uh, but the Stone Cold Stunner, the Skype Stunner, uh, was Nomadland a while back when I was yep. like, you need to see this is irrefutably a great movie i don't have to qualify this any any human being with flesh and blood who watches this movie is going to come away from it thinking that it was a really great film experience mm -hmm. in a similar vein <laughs> let me recommend to you uh another stone cold lock uh i finally caught up to that ted lasso show uh oh, right, that, yeah that's the jason sudeka show on apple plus mm -hmm. which so here's how this works, folks. Here's here's how you stick it to the man, like your old pal Bo, is uh, you you get the app and the the Apple Plus app. For a while, you had to have the Apple uh, box, right, like the yeah. streaming device, and uh, you don't have to do that anymore. Now it's just an app, you know. Like I, I watched it on my Xbox. So uh, you download the app and they give you uh, f like seven days for free, I think. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, this thing is only like 10 half hour episodes. I'm willing to take that bet, Apple Plus. And <laughs> Apple Plus give you the, you've just watched the sabbatical tape. You get seven days. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> now that you have started Ted Lasso, you have seven days before you owe us four ninety nine. Um but anyway, so I watched the whole thing over the course of two days and and probably would have finished it in one had I not just been exhausted. Mm. But uh, it's man, that show is so good, Duncan. It is um, the, the do you do you know the premise of this at all? I do. Yeah. So uh, I have Apple uh, Plus oh. and I've had it since. Since it came out, so I got my like I think I got my first year for free, and then with my phone contract because I've got an iPhone, um, one of my perks is I've still got it for free, and I have watched not one fucking thing on it. <laughs> I've had it for a year and a half and watched nothing on it, and it's not because there isn't things on there that I want to watch. There is like there's that um what's his tits did a. Uh, show on there a horror show and oh like, m9 he, uh Shyamalan. yeah, yeah, yeah. apparently like it's fucking great like so he's got stuff on there they're winning loads of awards there's things that i genuinely think i would want to watch i have just never sat down and pulled the trigger on even opening the app so um maybe this will be the maybe this will be the push that i need Bo. uh and andrew and chad also saying juno temple who is on the ted lasso program uh saying she's an underrated actress she is a fucking delight but yeah yes. so the premise of Do the you know temple and horns uh so the the premise of the show mm -hmm. is uh that um is it juno temple in ted lasso now it's juno somebody now i'm now i'm second guessing myself at any <laughs> rate uh so ted Someone's lasso <laughs> he's he's a small time american football coach who has led uh, a, an underdog team to an unlikely championship. Mm -hmm. And on the heels of this success, he is then hired by uh, a, a European football uh, or, you know, soccer here in the States, but, you know, football mm -hmm. everywhere else. Uh, he is hired to coach a football team, not knowing the rules of football, um, <laughs> not really <laughs> – not really equipped uh, to to lead a, a team in this sport by any measure. Mm -hmm. And it so happens that the team is now owned by a woman whose husband, uh, played by Giles from uh, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Oh, her, nice. Yeah, her husband, who's a real a rich asshole, uh, fucked around on her and left her, but she got some of his possessions one of the things she got was this football club that she is uh intending to drive into the dirt with the hire of ted lasso mm -hmm. what she didn't count on however is that ted lasso is so unrelentingly optimistic and nice mm -hmm. and and actually kind of good at, a, at being a coach despite the fact that he doesn't understand the sport that he's coaching that uh, it, like the world starts to bend around him to become a better place. 
Mm. And it Jason Sudeikis is incredibly funny on the show. It's got a great heart, but like I always feel like those uh, super optimistic characters can be kind of one note where they seem a little yeah. dense, <laughs> and and like they don't understand that the rest of the world looks at them like they're idiots. Mm-hmm. And what's kind of nice about this show is that Ted Lasso totally understands how the world sees him. And, and he actually has a moment where he talks about, like one of the reasons he has taken this job is because he's having problems in his marriage. Mm-hmm. And at one point he says, and this is all early on, I'm not spoiling anything for this show, I assure everyone. Um, but he says, like my my wife and I right now are are having some difficulty because she finds my optimism tiring. Mm-hmm. And... And so he understands, like, I am making this choice to be this person. And also you see that that facade shatter at times. That sometimes he can't, he can't, he doesn't have the energy to be that guy. Mm-hmm. And you see, him, like, the not the real him, because the real him is the optimist, but you see that, like, underneath it, there is there is a guy that does struggle with, you know all the pain in his life and and so forth and it's it's just such a wonderful show it's so heartfelt it's so funny when it, you get to the end of the first season it's a real it, like it captures that sports drama kind of enthusiasm too where by the end of it you're like fuck yeah like why isn't there a season <laughs> two of this i want to watch more of this right now and uh i i can't i can't recommend it enough i i feel like there's a uh by the end of the second episode there's a nice little reveal about like Ted Lasso's kind of scheme to make mm-hmm. friends with this woman who owns the team and it's it's very it's very sweet and it's very funny and there's a great set of like recurring characters of like you know the the football fans in the local pub who are just constantly pissed at, at this dude for yeah. fucking up their football club and like he, he, he the in the first episode he gets the nickname wanker and it just follows mm-hmm. him the entire season you know just everybody knows him as as coach wanker and shit and it's <laughs> it's it, it's very funny and uh again i can't recommend it enough it is uh it was a fucking delight i i'm looking forward to probably in a, a few more days, I'm going to go back and start watching it again because I mm-hmm. kind of miss those characters already. So, anyway. Nice. Oh, I, I will. It's on the list now, bro. Yeah, and especially, like I said, if you if you do not have, uh, or if you already have the Apple Plus, you're paying for it anyway. Like, yeah. Ted Lasso is, I, I'm sure there's other great stuff on there, but I can safely say, not having seen any of that, Ted Lasso is one of the best things that they have on that service. Uh, nice. it, it's just terrific. One of the best television shows I've seen in years. Um, anyway, let's let's talk about bad shit now. We we've uh, <laughs> successfully filleted a couple of movies. What movie did you see that uh, you were like, no, no, this is stinky? Um, <laughs> funnily enough, it's uh, it's it's another one that I've done for review that'll be uh, coming out tomorrow. A movie that I was convinced I had seen, but clearly hadn't seen. Um, and it's not garbage by any stretch of the imagination. It's just not very good. Um, Christmas Evil. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I th- you're thinking to yourself, Duncan, why are you watching Christmas Evil? I'm thinking. Mo- that. Yeah. That did that did um, come up. It's a it's part of the eighty eight film slasher classic collection, uh, which I'm doing in order for my show. So uh, yeah, we've swung around into that one. It's just I don't like. At what point did we think that do? Because there's an abnormally high amount of Christmas slashers, like compared to other seasons. Uh, or other celebrations. Yeah. Obviously, you've got Halloween, right? That's been done. Tick, we can't do Halloween anymore because Halloween's out there. And, and can- plenty of people have tried, but there's always, oh, yeah. you know, no, it's, not, it's, it, it's yeah. hard to top a movie called Halloween. 
Yeah, so I, and I understand they, they did other ones, you know, Friday the 13th, which became his own franchise, April Fool's mm-hmm. Day, Graduation Day. Um, April you know, Fool's Day, happy yeah, birthday yeah, to I me. Do, yeah, I do not like April Fool's Day, although I do need to watch it again. The end of that movie is so colossally dumb, it just ruins the movie for me. I know why I'm they did you. it, but it's just, it's like, why, like... You've destroyed any value of me ever coming back to watch this again, ever. Um, but yeah, so uh, Christmas Evil is uh, it's just uh, it, it got me it got me asking the question to myself: what is what is it about the idea? I, I understand, like it's probably the next. Yeah, I, I think I'm right with this. It's probably the only other kind of holiday celebration thing we have where people can openly dress up like a fantastical character um mm-hmm. outside was, of like your easter bunnies and so forth yes yeah like comic i don't know why there's not been a comic con slasher that to me seems like it would be so painfully easy to do and you can yeah. have like loads of different costumes why has someone not done that uh Hollywood, why have you not done that duncan like, uh you can look forward to my new movie comic carnage <laughs> Coming in late 2021. I just, you know what I mean? That to me seems like that's a fucking obvious thing to do. Why have you not done that? Anyway, um, yeah, there's just an <laughs> abnormal amount of, and obviously it's eat, you can dress up like Santa, anyone can be Santa. Uh, society just takes into account that people will dress up like Santa around Christmas time. But it's just, it's, the, the thing about it is if you're going to have that that opportunity to do something along those lines, and I know why you're doing it, I just think you would put more effort into it. And this movie is, it's not even just paint by numbers, it's just not good. Uh, The acting is pretty bad. The dialogue is terrible. Um, Even the kills, nowhere near as gory as I want them to be. You've got the image of Santa. You've got the idea of the season. I want to see red blood everywhere, motherfucker. Um, And they just don't do it. It feels cheap. (laughs) It feels really, really, really cheap. Even the Santa outfit kind of feels a bit cheap. Um, And yeah, it's just... I I moan with great ease at this slasher classic collection, not because I dislike slasher movies, um, it's safe to say of the two of us, I probably like slasher movies more than you do. Um, but I, I just, there was a part of me that always wondered why it was a genre I never deep dived on. So, you know, I, like Jallo, I, you know, I, I have. Ghost movies, I have. You know, like the whole director's back catalogs and all the rest. But with slashers, I always knew the big ones and had seen the big movies. Uh, you know, the franchisable ones and whatnot. Uh, and some of them, slightly more obscure, probably the ones from like the video nasties, less like the burning. But I'd never went like deep into the like the American slasher subgenre that boomed for four years or whatever. And I'm starting to realize that maybe my brain was protecting me. <laughs> like, it was like, no, 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 Duncan, this is, this is not for you, child. Um, yeah. I, I, Could it be that maybe Bo was right? Well, it's, I think the thing is, it depends what you're... I've said it before, right? I mm-hmm. mean, I'm not a tough sell on slashers, right? But slashers are America's answer to the Jallo, right? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, and, there's a very distinct formula. There's They're very unsurprising for the most yes. part. But they, but they also, I would argue, tend to lack some of the visual and audio flair of a giallo this is the thing so like i fully appreciate and put my cards down on the table that giallos can get pretty tawdry at times the stories can be absolute hogwash um the reveal of the killer at times completely nonsensical um but i do have that thing where i can at least latch onto something else whether it's beautiful cinematography the scenery the choice of a random american actor who's going to be in this which i think is a great choice um are some really strong female characters the score you know the gore all these things i can lean into them and then i come to the, i can I, I turn my attention to slasher movies and sadly if i if i give them the same quantifier of well you know ridiculous reveal tawdry storylines and acting and dialogue I then can't sit there and say, well, it has phenomenal cinematography. The score's absolutely bitching. You know, like, the practical effects tend to be pretty good. 
I think that's what my issue is. Like, there's nothing for me if a movie is is subpar. I, I desperately try and grab onto something to elevate it. It's just the sort of film viewer I am. But when there isn't, I just kind of feel deflated because I feel like, like, I'm sure on paper this seemed like a great idea. And the, the sad thing about it is there are better Christmas slasher movies. What, so, uh, give, give me an example. Like, what, what would you consider a, a good Christmas slasher? Silent Night is a... Is Silent, a not, Silent Night, Deadly Night. Night Deadly OG. Night is a, is, a, is a great Christmas because okay. it's just... Is batshit crazy, you know? What I mean? <laughs> okay. Yeah, I don't. I don't think that's wrong. I, I I'm and, just kind of curious where the bar is. And then there's that one that we watched one recently. Um, was it Vinegar Syndrome just put out? Um, it's a French one, and it's going to annoy me. Now. It came out the year before Home Alone, and Home Alone clearly ripped it off. And it is brilliant. And it's about yeah, yeah. like a, dis- a disgruntled serial killer who befriends a kid and then decides to murder him in his, his house. And it's um, it's not really a slasher movie per se. It's, it's more shot, kind of soft lens, but it's pretty gnarly. That's a good Christmas horror movie. Um, I think it just works better when you move out into the... Well, that season, because of the mythology and all the rest, the ones that work better are the ones that lean into... You know, something like a Saint, for example, or Rare Exports, where they actually make Santa, who is this creature that we look upon as being benevolent and, and good because of all these magical powers he's got, like being able to just materialize inside your house without needing doors or locks, and then just twisting that and making it, well, that's kind of ominous. <laughs> like, those are the ones that were better for me. The idea of a guy dressing up like Santa and killing people um, is okay the first time I've seen it, but why would I, you know, why am I going to watch it again if the only motivation is that the killer's motivation is slightly different? You know what I mean? Yeah. I, 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 think, I think that's what my issue is, and I've seen so many now that by the time I swung around to watch Christmas Evil, which, like I say, was a movie I was con- I I almost a hundred percent convinced I'd seen it before, um, and clearly had not, because uh, about ten minutes into it, I was like, no, this is this is completely different uh, than than the one I thought it was, and that just goes to show you that like there's about four or five that I've seen that have all melded into one, um, so so yeah, that, that's that's my thoughts. It's like I say, the score will reflect it. It's not a dog shit movie. It's not a this movie must be burned. Um, you know, it's, I'm not putting it in a wicker man anytime soon. But at the same time, it's just it's just not a very good movie. And I think it's because and slasher fans, sorry to like because we're speaking about slashers as well. Um I think slasher <laughs> It's slasher on brand fans, for us. I'll I'll allow yeah, it. I think uh, slasher fans, just in general, um, it's the, like, see what I was saying about, I gravitate towards the cinematography or the score or the gore or that, you know, random foreign actor that appears in a giallo, which is my hook into it. I think for slasher fa- uh, fans, it's a particular death scene in a slasher, which yeah. makes that movie, or it's the killer's look. And I think you will forgo a lot of the nonsense in a movie to have that. Well, that's the one that has that cool supermarket death scene where someone's head's crushed using a trolley. You know, is that and and that becomes how you build. It's how people talk about slasher movies. They, you know, it's the same way I talk about an Argento movie where I'm like that Tenebrae, that one shot which gave around the belt. You know, like you focus on those things. With slasher movies, I think it always devolves to the one particular kill that's in it and the, the way the killer looks. And the killer looks like Santa Claus, which I don't need to watch a horror movie to see that. And uh, you know what I mean? And uh, the kills are okay. <laughs> like that's literally like I wish I could see like you had like a like, like some sort of like Santa sack that had was full of razor blades and <laughs> dumped yeah. them in it or something, anything that would make me be like, yeah, the the motivation for it's just tawdry. Uh, I, yeah, not a terrible movie. I, I don't think I will watch it again. Let, let me give you a little bit of counterpoint from uh, the chat, mm-hmm. uh, which um, Robert was saying, uh, not sure if Christmas Evil is a true slasher, but uh, Maggie Mae Fish did a video uh, kind of breaking it down and praising it. And uh, also, he says, took down Fight Club. Which might happen next month with Bull. <laughs> which, <laughs> so. Right. Which I, I might I might need to check out myself to to sharpen my knives. <laughs> 
Uh, I don't know. Like, I'm, I'll probably, I'm, mm-hmm. I might watch that tonight. What Fight Club? Yeah. Watch Christmas Evil. <laughs> what? You just. I. This is like. When has that ever the... stopped you? When has that ever stopped you? When I've said the movie's bad. When has that ever stopped you? Going but to this watch doesn't it? sound like like it's bad in the way that I want it to be bad. Yeah, this it's is not. An old... And I think that's the thing. See if it was cheesy bad, I would. Well, I can totally get. Can, well, that's that's what Silent Night Deadly Night is. <laughs> like that's a that's a. That's even, right. It's even, you know it, it's absurd. In parts which you know, like the, the bit with the grandfather just like breaking out, he's fucking, he's weird. That the beginning of that movie is fucking terrifying. <laughs> I'll give you a kid and you see that. Like, I'm never going to visit granddad in the home again. No, um, right, right. <laughs> I mean, nor should you. Grandpa's weird. <laughs> Stay away from him. So as yeah, I I think yeah, I, the, the, yeah, it's not a a true slasher. Well, it's coming from the eighty eight films slasher classic collection, where I think three of the movies are actually true slashers in that collection let's always go back to remember children of the corn one two and three are in their slasher classic collection well let's stop attacking the fans for one second uh duncan (laughs) i uh here's here's my bad it's really not bad this is this is just a discussion i want to have with you Oh, go for it. Um, I know what it is as well. So yeah, that's why I didn't yeah, I think my, you do. That's why I didn't mention it in my good. I had to think on the the fly because I thought this might come up later on. So. Oh, you played some three D chess here on the show. <laughs> oh, scheming, talking <laughs> about movies you want to talk about using psychology. Um, <laughs> so uh, yeah, of course I'm talking about Honeydew, uh, yep. which is a movie that I think has some striking imagery, mm-hmm. and and ultimately I just don't know what the point is <laughs> at least you know what i'm saying that you're like i didn't mean that to come out as harsh as it did yeah it's, like, no, it's, it's not a harsh question it's a valid point right i like getting to the end of it i'm like what was i what am i supposed to take away from this movie what is the what what is the what part of the human experience is this illuminating what what am i supposed to be learning from this other than I don't know, people out in the woods sometimes ingest fungus and get goofy in the head? I mean, you could argue that you're basically throwing the same accusation against Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Right, but Texas Chainsaw Massacre, you know, you can make the argument of, hey, this was about the Vietnam War and people being thrown into the grinder and that kind of thing, that there was a political idea behind the movie. And I'm just, like, with Honeydew, it's just so obtuse. I just don't understand what what that message is. I don't think there necessarily is a message. Uh, And, and yeah, maybe that's my problem. I like it. Uh, it's one of the reasons I kind of like it. T- to me, Honeydew is one of the better movies I've seen this year, mm-hmm. specifically because I like how weird it is. It, it reminds me, like, see the weirder parts of Hereditary, where the score's just unsettling, and you're yeah. like, why is the score doing all the weird plinky stuff, and nothing's ha- and why can I hear that popping noise from that kid that's dead? <laughs> like, you're just like, looking around going, what the fuck is going on? Like, that, like, that's Honeydew from almost start to finish. Like, from the moment it starts, it's clear that it's, it's not going to be your standard horror fair. This and ain't your gonna... daddy's horror movie. <laughs> it's literally as it eat your daddy's Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Because um, essentially, because I, I didn't know anything about it before I watched it. So, like, when the, 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 the movie starts to move to... I'm going to use it again, Chainsaw Massacre, like, territory. Um, when you find out what Silent Green is in this movie, but... Uh, like the, uh, but I don't... Can, none of that was surprising at all. It, it's not surprising, but the weedy... There's a couple of elements that are surprising. Like, what is in the box, Bo? <laughs> when I saw that, I was like, oh, right, I don't want that. I didn't even know that we were doing that. How did we end up here? What's happening? And I think it's it's kind of it's kind of underpinned by really great performances. I I think the actors are fucking great in this. Like the old woman who apparently has not done many things, um, is great. She's weird and she shuffles about that house. And um, it's you know like from the moment you meet her, I'm like I'm not going in her house, but they go in her house. And uh, there's there's just I. It is a weird experience. I, I wouldn't quite say it's an art house movie, but it certainly felt like it was it was treading on the toes of kind of art house territory. Um 
and it didn't do what I expected it to do. It, it grossed me out in ways I didn't expect to be grossed out by not doing the things I expected to happen. Like there's a lingering shot over what could be potentially a lobotomy, which I was 100% sure because of how weird I felt up to that point that that movie was 100% going to give me. And that movie stretched that scene out and right. then, you know, didn't didn't do what every other horror movie would do. And I kind of appreciate that. Um, the ending it just made me feel yucky. <laughs> like, <laughs> just like totally. But yeah, I think... I don't know, like, to me, horror movies can can be about a point, but sometimes horror movies have to be about an experience, and I think this is an experience-based horror movie. It's just designed to unsettle you. Yeah. And if you're, not an, if you're not unsettled by it, then, you know, you're not going to get that nourishment elsewhere. Excuse the pun. Um, you're not going to get it anywhere else in the movie. But if you do, like, experience-based po- uh, podcasts, movies, which, I mean, I do, because that's primarily the the realm of art house is mostly about experiencing the conversations that come out as you try to interpret why it makes you feel the way it does um that's where i thought that movie shone um like i say i think it's one of the better ones just because i can't think of can't think of any movie i've seen recently that when it finished i was just like uh, you're like grabbing like grabbing a pillow and screaming at it yeah yeah uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, I think you're right. I, I, I think probably uh I and I wasn't really like freaked out by it or anything. Mm-hmm. And so by the time we got to the ending it, and, and you get to the like the horribleness of, of the conclusion, I was mm-hmm. just like oh, okay, so Yeah. You yeah, know, see, and yeah. And if you're at that point then that movie hasn't worked. Yeah, you. it just yeah, it, it it just didn't land for me. I do think that the lady uh the older woman who who's kind of the the main antagonist of the film yeah i do think she's good i actually didn't think the couple was very good see i liked them like the guys uh, the guys obviously doesn't have to work if you know who he is bo um that's 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 spielberg's son so um like he's not you know ed wood terrible or anything but also, fun, there are some yeah. moments I'm like, I don't know that he's quite getting there. Yeah, there's, there's, yeah, there's, there's I, I don't know. I, I, I kind of, I like, I liked it because it felt, it felt, like I felt his performance added to the experience. Which I, I, it's such a fucking bullshit excuse to say, well, it's an experience horror movie, which is basically what I've said. But I, I felt it added to it. Like their relationship is like totally tenuous right from the start, and. Like, like watching them go, like watching him gorge at that table, watching those old black and white Mickey Mouse cartoons mm-hmm. um, as a precursor to what is essentially going to be, <laughs> you know, he's he's setting himself up for it, bro. Um, like all those, generally, like, like I, I don't know, there's just something very weird about it. And yeah, like it, I see every now and again, I like something that's different, and it felt very different to me this year. Um, and I, I, I like that about it. I'm not saying it's the best horror movie I've seen this year, but it's, it's definitely one that's in my top five. I think. So. Um, yeah, I don't, uh, I don't know what that list looks like yet. It's hard for well, me. It's March, to... so yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think I've seen ten horror movies this year, and what I'm basically saying is it's at the midpoint. So yeah, if it makes the top ten at the end of the year. Well played, but then it's not been a great year. So. <laughs> That's kind of how I feel about it. Is like it, you know, there are things that I I thought were interesting about the movie and and i know that's kind of damning with faint praise but credit where credit's too right like you know at the end of the movie she's watching betty boop cartoons instead of the the popeye cartoons you saw at the beginning and things like that and there's some gender stuff going on and and there also i I just wish there had i i wish it had landed better for me or i wish Mm -hmm. there had been some kind of narrative hook to it that i could have i could have dug into a little bit more but um at any rate i i like i said i don't think it's the worst thing i ever saw but i also i I don't know that i would watch honeydew again unless you paid me to (laughs) because that's his first movie so it'll be interesting to see where he goes next yeah i I, hopefully to a screenwriter (laughs) it's my it's where my fingers are crossed that's that that's the outcome i'm hope i'm rooting for (laughs) So, Duncan, 
it's time now. Oh, uh, and God. folks, speaking if, of screenwriters, <laughs> yeah. And if you would like uh, to to ask some questions of Duncan and I, uh, feel free to drop them in the chat right now. I got a couple of questions lined up for us, Duncan. A uh, couple yeah, of ahead. couple of head scratchers, couple of couple of Ooh. noodle noodle burners. I they call them. <laughs> couple of, uh, yeah, couple of uh, gray pudding stirs. <laughs> you did right now. <laughs> um, buying time. Also. <laughs> Stroll, stroll. Uh, <laughs> stretch, Duncan. Um, also, uh, the movie that you were you were trying to think of, the mm -hmm. French film from 1989 called yes. Deadly Games. Yeah, if you've never seen that, Bo, watch that movie. Like, I did. I did watch that, that when it hit Shutter. I actually watched yeah. it, and that is really I, enjoyable. It's so much fun. Yeah, that's a, that's a good time. Um, it's, a, it's a poor diabetic almost in a coma and dying granddad stuffed into a suit of armor to keep him out of harm's way and he's stuck in it. it's <laughs> right it, it's suitably bonkers is the thing yeah. like it, it kind of knows how ridiculous it is and that's mm -hmm. kind of what i love about it mm -hmm. um okay so but, let's uh, let's take a couple of questions like i said if you want to uh, if you're watching this live and want to drop a couple of additional questions in the chat, feel free to. And and if they're uh, if they're interesting or good, uh, Duncan and I will answer it. But first, Duncan. Yes. Uh, Xavier West asks us. Uh, you guys are forced to make a versus horror film. Oh, what God. what two or three properties would you combine? <sighs> And I feel like the way the, the question is phrased, it's something that you and I have to agree on. <laughs> oh, no. So. <laughs> Never going to happen. Um, a, I feel Pinhead has to be in there. That See, I'm 100% with you. I think it's Hellraiser versus. So it has to be, it has to be something that's comparable. So, I mean, something like Hell, Hellraiser versus Wishmaster would make sense to me because of the powers that the, like, they're ancient entities. Um, <laughs> they both come from, uh -huh. you know, objects where they're released. <laughs> sure. So, I think they would be I, friends. Like, I think it would be like the Martha yeah. scene from Batman v Superman. Or... <laughs> oh, your mother's name is Martha, is she? Oh, <laughs> Wait, you me. come from a box? I come <laughs> from a stone. <laughs> <laughs> yes yes we have much in common yes much much yes yes um uh, this Do, is about are idea. you constantly being fooled back into your box yes yes i am yes they, they worked out if they twisted the box in a certain way it created a dagger which would send me back to leviathan with me they always come up with a wish that ends up undoing all the really fun wishes <laughs> Actually, now I want to see that movie. I just want to see, like, like, <laughs> you know, they do those, uh, those, they do those. Uh, I've mentioned it before, like, I think it's like Empire Magazine or Total, Total Film or Variety do those. Um, it's about Oscars time to get like the best directors and all that, sit around and have a conversation. I want that with killers from horror movies. Um, <laughs> just like yeah. <laughs> like uh, uh that would so one of the reasons i really like that um a vicious fun movie which i saw at glasgow fright fest this year mm -hmm. uh, which is the premise of that is that a guy stumbles into a self-help group for mass murderers that's <laughs> just really 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 good that was uh, uh... Uh, there was a, a movie recently about that. Um, is, it, is it the same one? <laughs> nah, no, 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 no. It, it was a couple of years ago. I'm trying to think mm -hmm. who was in it. One of the, um, like, maybe Carrie Russell, somebody like that. Oh, all right. Oh, anyway. I, need to, I need to do a bit of research. So, yeah, I mean, that seems... But I'm thinking, like, Wishmaster's such a boring character where Pinhead is clearly the better, and he would win. Um, so we need to kind of even it up. So Pinhead Ra won. Ramman saying Hellraiser versus uh, the Tall Man. That would work. Uh, it would. Although but I still I, think I still think Pinhead would win relatively easy. I I, I think you got to go a little more primitive. 
So I'm saying Hellraiser versus Lake Placid. Oh where... no, I've... Hellraiser versus Prophecy. Get some Christopher Walken in there. Oh, you are 100 percent right. Yeah, you've got heaven and hell fighting each other, Bo. You see what I'm saying? What you got a box? <laughs> I'm practically your boss. Oh no, no, I have no bosses. I am king of hell. The hell realm is mine. <laughs> I am Pinhead. Yes, yes. They didn't call me Pinhead to begin with. Originally in the script, I was known as Lead Cenobite or Cenobite number one. I had to fight for the title of Pinhead. Yes, yes. Yeah, I've always had a name. <laughs> so I win <laughs> automatic. <laughs> I was in heaven. So I got thrown down. Where did you come from? A box. Totally works. Totally yeah. make that movie, Hollywood. And then you've got it, like you've got a good reason to do things. You've got heaven and hell fighting off against it. That's why Freddy versus Jason on paper seemed like a good idea, but they gave it to the hands of a fucking moron and what you got was bad. Uh, but yeah, like that's what it should have been. So there we go. Alan McPherson with uh, Jason versus Cube. I'm kinda <laughs> I'm down with that movie for sure. All right, we've got a totally sighting. Let me handle some cat. Oh, the cat, the cat disagrees. Yeah, hang on. <laughs> Just a tail moving in the American flag in the back. That's amazing. <laughs> Your cat's like, <laughs> you opened the kibble, I came. Yeah, no, he hears talk of the Prince of Hell and yep. totally comes running. <laughs> uh, it's like tuna for that cat. <laughs> You oh. opened the can, we came. <laughs> I'm just like I've seen like the I can see a video feed of us, but it's like, it's like twenty seconds behind. Right. And what I thought was gonna happen was you were gonna dump that cat in a bin or something. <laughs> oh <my goodness. laughs> yeah, let me tell you a little story. What if, well, yeah, what if uh, what if I just pulled out a gun and <laughs> shot it like That's what was that? Album. And then twenty what? seconds later you see the carnage. Bo versus Tully is the movie I want to see. Uh, I'm telling you, man, that is a constant battle in this house. That cat is <laughs> privileged. Um, and he's so, the kind of so, the kind of fat ass cat, Duncan. And you may have this with your dogs too, where mm -hmm. like if they're laying on the bed and you try to get in, they're real pissed off that you're moving oh, yeah, them. You're moving them, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're just like, hey, motherfucker, like you I would... bought and built this bed, <laughs> right? You've got it's my no... bed natural skills or anything you've lived inside your whole life like you would be eaten by coyotes and hawks and shit the second i open the door for you so don't grumble at me when i shove you over you ought to be licking my feet you ungrateful little fuck but that's a cat for you that's a cat that's that a cat you knew what you were getting when you bought it, so i well. right oh well he was clearly free you don't buy a cat you, <laughs> cats happen to you <laughs> So I think I think what we're saying is if we had our choice to do the movie, it'd be Pinhead versus Prophecy. I, yeah, I think I think that's a winner. So um, squared. You know, look, I, I I feel like that is well answered. Uh, question number two. Oh. Um, <laughs> Ballwalk question. <laughs> kind kind of in the ballpark. Uh, Ram Man <laughs> asks us, uh, do you think the monster verse can continue after Kong versus Godzilla? Is there plans to? Can continue out with i would I, you gotta think that there's some stuff on the drawing board because you can build up to a destroy all monsters mm. you know like you could yeah. do an avengers of the like you could do now that you've done uh king of the monsters you yep. do skull island you do kong yep. versus godzilla yep um then you do you know a couple of standalone properties kong versus fucking something else godzilla mm. fight some monsters from outer space bring them all <laughs> back together for destroy all monsters you know like you could get another yeah. three four movies out of this pretty pretty painlessly i don't uh, know if they can though that's the thing like if, i was surprised to be honest i was surprised when they decided to do kong versus godzilla not because our uh, godzilla versus kong or whatever we're calling it yeah not because i I didn't think, you know, not not because I didn't want to see it, but I, I don't know how profitable those movies actually are. You know what I mean? I, th yeah. I think I think they do make a lot of money, but I don't necessarily think they're easy to shoot. Um, 
and to franchise that way and like it just it always seems like that's that was always the weird jump for me when they tra- it's the same to be honest with the universal monsters when they were talking about doing the whole dark universe over there and i was like really just right it worked, to me it makes more sense in the comic book world than it does really anywhere else yeah now, that versus thing is kind of similar even though that you know, more has its roots in horror than anywhere else but even then i'm kind of like I, I just don't i don't know i'm very excited to see it but i mean just it as well as is that checking your i mean the earth was pretty much fucked at the end of the last one now everything's rebuilt in time for it to get fucked again and then we're going to have another start on the... I think you're right. If they take it to space, which is the death of any franchise, Paul, um, if they take it to space, then maybe. Um, but... Yeah. For me, I it's all know. about the tone. It, it's got to... Like, like I, I've, I've said this already, that from the the uh, trailer for uh, Kong vs. Godzilla or Godzilla, Godzilla vs. Kong, whichever it is, mm-hmm. whichever side you land on <laughs> uh, of that debate... Um, that uh, I I felt like it was a little over serious for me yeah. for being a movie about a giant lizard fighting a giant monkey, mm-hmm. and and I want it to be fun and it might it might very well be like the, the the trailer may be pitching the movie as a big blockbuster you know again kind of a comic book level extravaganza yeah as opposed to no 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 this is do you want to see two monsters beating the shit out of each other for like an hour and 50 minutes that's what this movie is yeah and and that's what they need to do and if they do that like that's what made kong skull island so good is that it Mm -hmm. was just a big schlocky monster movie and it didn't get too highfalutin (laughs) you know like you kind of had your crazy john c Riley running around in that movie Mm -hmm. as well as uh uh you know the the military kind of angle and all that shit and it was fun and you had like giant bugs eating people and all that stuff it was a good time and so that's what i hope for kong versus godzilla and i thought godzilla king of the monsters was a slog that movie ought to have been fun and it never was yeah i think it's just i think it's a, a tonal thing to be fair. yeah completely I think, I think like you yeah. can th- there is a template where space aliens are dropping monsters are off on earth all the fucking time yeah. and godzilla's got to go fight it like those movies exist that's yeah. the show a run of of the godzilla films like that you can do that and yeah. you could be kind of goofy and silly with it and get but, away with it but, but i don't do those do those movies in western audiences make i i think Hundreds there's a way to do billions it. yeah yes. i think that's i think that's what i think yes. that's where the i think that's where it comes down i think it's why they try and pitch it more serious and less fun um because they are trying to whereas like just the western audiences are just not your general cinema gore is just not acclimated that way and don't know the history of those movies and don't know what yeah, they're supposed but... to be pitched at so they pitch them too serious i think that's the I think that's what you've got. Like the 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 companies that are putting them out put out relatively like they don't. And if you want your massive fun over the top, uh, just like this is a western movie, which is you know do not like you watch Pacific Rim, but Pacific Rim didn't make hundreds of millions of, of yeah. dollars. Uh, no, it you're barely right. got a sequel, and that sequel wasn't good. Um, no, so, it was not. Although no, Pacific so Rim fucking rocks. That's Pacific. The first that's Pacific a great Rim movie. Is, fucking great yeah. so and that's that's your movie that's what you're talking about but 100 like, percent, yes over the top action based I, if you're a if you're a hollywood exec and you're looking at the paper the paperwork tells you that that movie didn't do well um so what you're doing is you need to make it more engaging with character stories and right like, make you, it more serious about this and all the stuff that made independence day a hugely successful movie which i think is too serious so, you should be <laughs> crying by the end of by the end yeah. of Kong versus Godzilla, you ought to be shedding tears. So, yeah, I well, know a, that's a life changing experience. No, it should is... be fun roller coaster ride. That yeah, is what I, that movie should be. I should be gorged on popcorn and soda. Yeah, being like, holy shit, that was so fun! I can't wait to tell everybody about how much fun I had watching that movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's what I hope. It. I genuinely do hope that. You know, you do get that Pacific Rim style, like, I'm just going to bash this fucking monkey in the head yeah. with, with 
uh, uh, an entire freighter. You know, yeah. Like, I, like, I, I, like I've, I've always said, it's one of the like that's one of the most fist pumping scenes in cinema when that when the the fucking large mecha grabs a freight ship and uses yeah. it as a samurai sword and Pacific Rim. I was like, Del Toro gets it. <laughs> that that and I lost. <laughs> hand to god duncan i lost the respect of a co-worker by talking about how excited i was by the in the trailer there's that moment where you see the robot about to punch one of them monsters right in the fucking puss yeah and you see jets fire on the elbow to yep. drive the fist harder and i was like now that is some shit i want all movies to feature i want yeah. somebody in charge of like Hey, how do we make this scene ten percent cooler? <laughs> yeah. Also, also without without being like, without being a dick to your coworker. Uh -huh. Also, physics would dictate you probably have to do that anyway. In terms of the mass, it wouldn't move probably quick so. enough to punch yeah. someone without rockets. So not only not only is it fucking rad, Bo, science. <laughs> like, so yes, science. scientifically accurate. So in your face, Bo's coworker. Yeah, yeah. Uh, she was having that up. She was just like, so that's what you get excited about? I'm like, you're goddamn right. <laughs> yes, yes, some people have children and whatnot. That ain't for me. I like robots punching monsters in the face. <laughs> it's that scene in Eastbound and Down where Kenny Powers, played by Danny McBride, takes a kid out to shoot the shotgun and he's just going, ah! <laughs> Yeah, yeah, absolutely. He's man titties. It's amazing. Uh, Rayman uh, <laughs> chiming in with hashtag Team Kong. I, Ooh, I mean, I'm Godzilla all the way. Hey, I, G. I'm a, I'm in a let them fight place. I don't <laughs> care who wins. Uh, I believe they call that sitting on the fence bowl, which isn't comfortable. I look. I want the the real winner to be the viewing public. I want these <laughs> two to beat the shit out of each other in different biomes. For the entire course of the film. It's just like, I want there to be all the character shit I want is them cutting away of like, holy shit, do you see all, uh, do you see that big monkey fucking that lizard up for 15 minutes? That was fucking crazy. Where did they go? I don't know. We think they, they're heading to Antarctica. Cut to Antarctica. Fight number two. Yeah, you know, I'm looking, for, oh. I'm looking forward to the, the porn parody, which is Coxzilla versus Dong. Um, King Dong versus. <laughs> yeah. It's, it, oh, granted it's from the way i've described it <laughs> it's going to be more on the kind of homosexual bent but um i'd still watch it so alan uh also saying that he lost all interest in star wars once it went to space <laughs> i get it stay on tatooine stay on tatooine yeah it, right like boy you just you don't have much of a foothold in that movie then right off the bat you're in space in that thing yeah um <laughs> <laughs> hence the joke um but i'll i'll, I'll tell you uh we should probably get around to talking about the slasher episode good Ooh. news is folks like the notes on this episode like a page and a half so this yeah, ain't gonna take long there isn't actually a lot that happens in this mostly no. because the whole opening scene of this is regurgita regurgitated footage from episode one yeah the this episode is one of the shorter episodes of the show and it's yeah. reusing footage this is the yeah. clip show of of season one of slasher this is we got greenlit for eight episodes but realistically there's only seven worth of script here so um can we this is this is the 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 hashtag stall episode of the yeah <laughs> the stretch. boy um, yeah all filler no killer in this one that is a hundred percent true. Well, yeah, actually, you're right because he doesn't actually kill anyone in this episode. No, we'll, we'll get to the belly flop. Um, yeah, the, the, the belly flop, which makes zero fucking sense. But we're gonna get. We're gonna, <laughs> it's one of many things that doesn't make sense because this episode, Bo, what's it called? What's this one called? Uh, in the pride of his face. <laughs> In your face. In the pride of your face, Duncan. In the face. And, and <laughs> it opens up because, again, we're cutting all the corners we can for episode seven. Yeah. Opens up with the end of the last episode. Just the exact dialogue yeah. from the end. So not like, you know, yeah. how like, it, it used to be cool when you watched 
like um like old episodes of Batman or something where they would do the you know they would give you the scene from or the scene that was the previous scene in the last episode or the, the kind of closing scene but it'd be slightly different so they would be in slightly different places or the dialogue would be delivered differently or the camera would be at a different angle you know I, I love that. There's a something about that that makes me smile. There's a, a certain charm. No, no, no. This is just the same footage. <laughs> this is yeah, exactly we're not. the same conversation footage done again. Yeah, no, we're just reusing the same footage. And it's it's where Sarah <laughs> is at Tom Winston's bedside, who loyal viewers of this show may recall. He uh he ended up staging a fight essentially to get tossed into the infirmary. Because <laughs> he thought they would tell <laughs> Right, because his, the whole plan was to get Sarah to come see him, which she does. Yeah, but not because she's been told. No, not because he got <laughs> he got beat up. That that whole plan was pointless. Um, no, he uh, she's going to see him because of uh, uh, further murders and whatnot. Mm. And mm. anyway, so she's at his bedside, and she's like, "So you're finally gonna tell me, aren't you? You're you're me father. Now tell me why you killed me parents." And I'm like, oh, right, so are we going to get... And it flashes back. It flashes back yeah. to 1988, and Boab's like that. Finally. Finally. Let's let's do this. Yeah. And much to my dismay, Bo, um, it's the opening scene of the first episode mm -hmm. with a little bit tagged on, which adds nothing. Yeah, there's no further revelations or anything like that. It's just... <laughs> Although I have to say the pregnant belly flop in the blood still pretty funny. It's yeah, funny. Also, completely would kill the baby, but um, or just squirt it right out. Oh, like right out like a bungee cord. Like uh -huh. oof, and you just have to catch it with a catcher's mitt. Um, <laughs> but you <laughs> shoot down the hall and then bounce back. Oh my baby! <laughs> <laughs> Some sort of weird kind of fetal ping ping pong uh, uh like those idea. old paddle ball games you know that's <laughs> that's why you have an umbilical cord. you're a father duncan you know this yeah this is true it's me medically having looked into it this is exactly the reason that that kids are born with an umbilical cord it's nothing to do with feeding yeah it's to do with awesome and so <laughs> it's right it's, uh, they tell you that in school sports. Sports. extreme bo extreme <laughs> they, they put on a little third eye blind and bungee right out of a, a uterus <laughs> but like the, she falls over so we get this the same scene she falls uh -huh. over this time the extended scene is basically tom being revealed as the killer by her mm -hmm. where she pleads for her life telling him that you know it's your baby right which we know which we already knew yeah and you know i love you actually i, I fell in love with you and love will see us through bo <laughs> like love will love, get us through love will keep us together Mm, oh, totally inappropriate for this scene but would also totally work uh -huh. um but yeah he, 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 what's it? the frustrating thing about the show is i actually do like the gore see when the show goes gory i, I like how vicious it gets he mm -hmm. stabs her in the fucking throat and then sl he slices open her belly first which by the way you'd kill the baby but mm -hmm. um it just seems to be my theme here is you'd kill the baby she falls baby dies slice baby dies and um, but like <laughs> like he basically slices her belly and then stabs her in the fucking throat. Uh huh. And it's gnarly. And we flash back to Tom Winston lying on, on the bed. And Sarah looks kind of pissed off because no new information has been passed yeah. on. I look pissed off because no, no new information's on. I was thinking in my head, Bo's probably going to be pissed off because no new information's been put on and then credits. Yeah, right. She's like, So why'd you really kill him then? I knew all of that. And he's just like, huh. and just kind of looks away all dramatic. And that's it. <laughs> he goes, he goes, oh boy. And we realize Sam Beckett has actually been transferred <laughs> at that point. Yeah. He's Sam, deep. Ziggy is telling me there's an 87% chance that <laughs> you've got to, <laughs> you got to save her from this killer, the executioner. Which is why, is that why he jumps, that, that's the belly flop explanation. Uh-huh. <laughs> right, a hundred percent. I we've we've once more have made this a better show. <laughs> oh yeah, but we do. It cuts to credits, and I'm just like, oh, this is why I hate this show. This is why. This is why. 
We yeah, the first eight minutes of this show, all the information we knew before, spinning our wheels, we know nothing else. There absolutely, it, it, except it, she says that she loved them. That's it. Yeah, yeah. All right, fine. Um, so after the credits, cut to Sarah drinking with Robin at brunch again, because which is becoming a habit. <laughs> Sarah is maybe drinking a little more than uh, she needs to. Yeah, just a, just a tad. <laughs> and then, uh, while while they're having drinks, she asks Robin. She goes, Robin, do you think I'm dumb? And it's like, oh man, that's a little bit of a softball yeah. here, Sarah. <laughs> Robin's doing the Arnold Schwarzenegger from Terminator, going through all the different things he can see really yeah. quickly. Fuck and you, most of them are, asshole. <laughs> most of them are, yes, yes, you are. That's a stupid question because it's obvious. Have you looked in the mirror? Why are you so fucking clueless? Why did you move back here? Remember, my husband died recently, leaving me two million in the hole. And I'm drinking at lunch because I want to just get fucked. Are you bringing this shit to my door? Man, I I totally forgot about his debts and everything. They have yeah, not two, mentioned that in five episodes. Two million in the hole, bro. Yeah. And his husband, the love of his life, who granted put him in two million in the hole, dead and by the killer that wasn't killing until she moved back. And I love how Robin is just like... <laughs> no you're not <laughs> dumb i mean you're smart you're smart you're a smart girl you're, you're you a found, smart <laughs> you found ariel so you're not totally stupid well yeah she's like she's like do, do you think it's uh like me coming back here was a bad idea and everyone sitting at the tables is like yes <laughs> like but like, so no no you, you saved the day that's one good thing that's come out of it by the way remember two million in the hole and my husband died but yeah let's let's just talk about you let's make it all about you sarah <laughs> and she's uh, she's like look i wish i could stay to talk but i can't i gotta go home and talk to my no good husband He's like, oh, trouble in paradise. Yeah. And I'm well, like, yeah, they've never been a happy couple since they come here. So why you're doing that? It's like, they're constantly at each other's throats. Trouble in paradise. Fuck you. Yeah. And even she says, well, I don't know about the paradise part, but yeah. there's definitely uh, trouble. I'm about to give my little Jack Johnson, I think. <laughs> She's like, so, like, business is going to pick up. And we realize really quickly that once again, Slasher is cutting checks at its ass can't cash no. bill because we go right back on that within three seconds. Yeah, she goes home and immediately Dylan has just set out like this really nice dinner for her. There's uh, uh, like wine. He's got mm -hmm. this fancy dessert. The mm -hmm. whole deal. It's pears, pears and espresso cream, which it sends poached pears and espresso cream. Mm -hmm. Now, Alan is here. Alan is a chef. Um, so poached pears, unless he's poaching it in something that would be complimented by espresso cream, that sounds fucking rank. Uh, like, um, like, see what he, like, uh, uh, interestingly enough, when the camera pans to that dessert later on, half eaten, um, which, which makes sense. Whatever it was, everything else sounded lovely. There was a salad he'd made, which sounded really nice. Mm. Uh, lamb with pomegranate. I was like, ooh, that sounds, sounds delicious. And then he's like, yeah, a poached pear fucking espresso cream and i was like Ugh. and i love I, I, I love espresso but you, you're fucking with you're fucking with a good old cup of coffee there by doing some fancy shit and putting it beside a pear stop not crazy about pears in general i like but see pears like it's that great um eddie is our skip where pears have like maybe about like half a day of being like ripe and edible and if you eat them either side of that you either break a tooth eating it or it's just mush yeah yeah, I, I, and that's probably my problem is I don't, I haven't had a lot of great pears. Yeah, um, don't be eating American pears for a start. Get yourself some English ones. Mm. I let's not turn this into a national thing. So, um, anyway, so he Dylan is like, well, hey, let's toast to fresh starts, and he gives her this whole line about how he's been a bad husband and he takes yep. full responsibility for all this, yep. and Sarah's like, you know. I think somebody might be getting laid tonight. She is like literally, she's like, she's like, you know, we're gonna rekindle some of the magic. Uh -huh. 
you know, I'm gonna, you know, I know it's kind of inappropriate, but I'm gonna do what my mum used to do. I'm gonna film us. <laughs> like, <laughs> nothing bad's coming out of this. In the same bed, we will fuck in the same room my mum fucked in before she died. Um, and then she takes a hard right turn, though. Oh yeah, like she like from all this lovely thing rekindling and all the rest, ultimatums are dropped here like bombs, bo. Yeah, it, uh, she goes from, I think. I think you're making me a little moist between my legs there, fella. From that to, you know, what I've decided is we can't stay here in this house anymore. Yep. I think we need to leave. In fact, I think the decision is your career or me. Yeah. And then goes upstairs and Dylan's like, the fuck just happened? Yeah, let's, it's like a, a right turn. She doesn't even go upstairs, though. She goes through to, and this is, I love this because they make mention of her bad leg. Oh, right. right. Yeah, but she yeah. was walking around with fine, but as this episode goes on, it gets progressively worse. So this is the delayed effects of about three days since she got hit with a fucking crowbar, which yeah. like, like she's, she's like she's walking progressively worse. She goes through to the living room, and what I love about this is like she's, I want you to drop the case and all the rest. She goes on a website to do with the murder of her mother, and then the first thing, the first thing, the first thing, <laughs> like yeah. she's she asked him, is, in his research, did they come across anything to do with her mother's murder? And I'm like that. So you've told him to drop the case, not think about it. It's her mm-hmm. or the career. And three seconds later, she wants dirt from him about the case. Very difficult. Very, very, very. It's like taking a, a recovering alcoholic to a wine bar and asking what on the menu they would recommend. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, and- she she's goes to the couch with her her laptop and is like all right well if you won't tell me i'm just gonna search some random websites then yeah. and and starts looking up you know facts like just googling things i don't know about my parents murder <laughs> and <laughs> and finds this website this website that was clearly built on angel fire like in 1999 that has a real kind of shunky background feel to it. it doesn't look nice at all yeah yeah and <laughs> right it looks like it's a you know a myspace page or geospaces or something <laughs> yeah, st- still uses flash um, there's that little I mean? <laughs> uh under construction gif of the guy <laughs> with the <laughs> <laughs> the, guy, the, the guy with the jackhammer <laughs> um <laughs> but anyway so she she there's like a, a contact there's just like a hey leave a comment on yeah, this well, like if you yeah if you've got any if you've got any information about it please get in touch yes to which she messages the person who runs the website saying i like i need some information i'm like that's literally not what the information's on the website. You know right. I mean? It says leave a comment if you have information on it, not uh, the other way around. And also, like, why are you not writing on this? I'm the I'm the daughter. We should chat. It's like something yeah. to get like and to, like no no no. It's just like she puts her email in. Like, or you yeah, obviously. or use an anonymous name. Don't yep. <laughs> don't just be like, oh, it's me, Sarah. The the lady that you're talking about here. Um <laughs> It's right. Or you either go totally anonymous, or you contact them and say, "I'm this girl. We need to yes. sit down and have a talk." Yeah, that's literally what like what you would do. But no, she she types this message. She hits enter. Meanwhile, like Dylan's all shifty in the kitchen, trying to he's doing his hashtag stall stretch. He's like, yeah. eh, "No, uh, sort of. I didn't hear you. I was putting away things, darling." Me, yeah, meanwhile, his phone is like, "Bing," and, and she's she, like, at first, she does the look at first, and I'm like, you're going to look at his phone. Yeah. Which, one, not cool, but two, I get it. And then she types, but th- this phone bings three times. So she sends three emails. <laughs> yes. Because the first time she doesn't equate it to it. So she then writes a second email, it pings, and she's like, hmm. Wait a second. <laughs> That's quite a coincidence. <laughs> so many. What if I tried a third time? But, like, I was kind of thinking to myself, she sent the first email. Uh-huh. Why would you send a second email straight away to the same email address well, from that box? Oh, by the way, my name's Sarah and I'm the daughter. That, like, I forgot it's to mention good that. good science. First it's, you know, clickety, 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 sin. Ping! Wait a second, I think I'm on to something here. 
Oh. Clickety, clickety, clickety. Send. Ping. Oh, man. And of course, like... One, situation... Just one more for good measure. <laughs> clickety, clickety, clickety. Send. Ping. So she, she lifts it up and she sees he's got three mail, three email notifications. And she's like that. Oh, Dylan, um, what's your password to your phone? Um, I need it now. And he's like, um, that's my bad note. It's, your Irish accent is terrible. I'm Scottish, though. That's... Um, <laughs> it's also Fine. better than mine you son of a bitch um, <laughs> um there's, there's shared dna between our nations um but yeah like, gross. like <laughs> yeah nice um <laughs> she's like i need i need your pass to the phone the wi-fi is a bit spotty and he's like yeah cool so he gives her the password and then he comes through and she's like huh, right in his face for the phone yeah you <laughs> look at this you son of a bitch but the thing is i was thinking to myself what does that like? Because I know what it means in the bigger scheme, but from the smaller scheme, what does this actually mean? From her, what, what's she playing she, in her head about this? Because she makes some lofty jumps with no evidence at all, which is a very Sarah thing to do. But. Sure. Well, her complaint is that he, from the time that they met, yep. he was trying to get into her good graces because he was chasing the the story of the murders but how does she know how old the website is i i don't know that she knows that i think it's more of like she's just jumping to that conclusion she she jumps which is which isn't wrong which is not wrong wrong. she's a hundred percent right but it is a swift left turn from your emails attached to a website about my parents murders to you know, you've manipulated you, you me. me. You, you manipulated yeah. me, and this this marriage has been bo- you know born out of a farce, um, which it has. I mean, we, we know that, and it's probably yeah. now this is the loose reveal, by the way, because we're never going to get the proper reveal. We got a couple of reveals in this episode, and they're just kind of flung in here to tie up loose ends with no degree of satisfaction. But this is why he was in touch with Tom by letter. Yes, he was obviously investigating it beforehand. So this is how we find out, not from Tom. So that whole awkward showdown at the 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 the, the penitentiary jail. question yeah, pen, mark penita- yeah we're gonna get we're gonna get even better with that like he said like we need to get him like later we need to get him back to the town penitentiary why like like if you're a serial killer and you've been attacked in jail you don't get you get taken to the infirmary in the jail. Yeah, they don't, they don't take you to the the local hospital. He wasn't in there. Oh, anyway, and right. honestly, it it's just the back room of the Rexall. Of course, it is. it's <laughs> you know <laughs> hospital is is a stretch, but yeah. And so but, while and it, like he says he says that he, he admits to it as well to his credit. Yeah, he says, listen, yeah, I, first you were a mark, but when I met you, I did fall in love with you. That was never a lie. I do really love you. All the rest, and she is having. None of it, but but in the meantime, things are happening elsewhere, Bo. Yes, they're interrupted by Cam, who is yeah. busting in to let Sarah know that... Uh, th- because this... we've missed a scene, so we've missed a scene, right? So the scene yeah, that we've but... missed here is pish, right? But let's, we might as well cover it. <laughs> yeah. the, the cop who, I can't remember... Sharma is his in... name. Yeah, I can't remember him. This is my bad memory. I can't remember him being in this much... But he apparently appears to be, he's a comic relief of this show. I apparently. guess, I mean, he hasn't been in it a bunch, first no, of but all. He's, he's now the comic relief of this yes, show. He finds, right. he, he finds the, well, for some reason he has been called to the, I don't know why I do um, quotation marks, because uh, the listeners that are listening to the podcast can't hear that, but the viewers can. So it gets called to the apartment where that family died like years ago mm-hmm. because of that bad you know property deal or whatever they froze to death which mm, robin's know. husband's right yeah. clearing the land kind of thing yeah yeah so he he comes to there and he finds um he essentially comes across what looks like to be the staging area of the executioner and mm-hmm. that there are on the wall <laughs> like hand-drawn. junji ito style drawings yeah yeah which, once again, when we find out who the executioner is, which we will in this episode about that, why the fuck are you in the profession you're in? And why is Sarah the artist? 
Like there seems like a disconnect yeah. here. You should have the art gallery. But anyway, um, <laughs> like or a comic book like franchise or so these hand drawn uh, seven deadly sins. And as he's calling for backup, he hears a noise and in walks Cam. And mm-hmm. I was like, hmm, Cam got there quick. I wonder if Duncan and Bo's theory from episode number one will pan out. <laughs> yeah, it <laughs> turns out, turns out the least surprising thing ever happens. Yeah, uh, but yeah, Cam, Cam is there, and he's like, "Hey, uh, boy, this is, sure is one creepy room, all right." Say, yeah. look at this awesome little black book that yeah. has all these cool, <laughs> cool yeah. sins written in it, and it's just names of just like, "Hey, here are all the potential victims for this sin," and it's then like, literally, yeah, it's like and it's- then a circle like, around the name of who the killer decided on yeah i mean it's everything you need to know that is a serial killer's lair yes um, yes all, all like spread out but he notices that there's only six deadly sins on the wall uh to, to which cam says ah pride is missing and i'm like he knew that pretty quick there cam but i suppose mm-hmm. you have been investigating this after all your father is the minister so i can kind of see where we're going with this um but yeah very 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 quickly He's like, yeah, Pride's not there. They flip to the book, and there are two names in the book. I get only two names in the book for Pride. Now, to me, I feel like Pride is probably the sin that most people commit. <laughs> like, so mm-hmm. the fact that the executioner could only get two names from the town <laughs> that met his de- definition of or her or her a definition of Pride kind of shitty but anyway anyway um this is why cam ends up there and he breaks down the door during a domestic <laughs> well he's got a, like dylan actually has his hand on her to stop her walking away and that's when the door gets beaten down and uh, if i was dylan i'd be thinking oh the black man's going to prison surprise surprise cops right. turn up really quick when that happens yeah white it's... girl in trouble cops there in a second becomes the director's cut of get out <laughs> Uh, yeah. So Cam rescues in again in quotes rescues Sarah from Dylan, takes yep. her back to his place, mm-hmm. and she she's upset at but herself. Does he though? I think that's where they are. But cause that's what I thought, and I think there's a continuity error in here because that's where I thought I thought they threw Dylan out. And they stayed in that house. But the next scene, you're right, they're in Cam's house. Yeah. However, when Officer Muck Goofy or Diffy or whatever we're calling him shows up to rescue him later on, it's in Sarah's house. Yeah, that's true. I don't know. I know I, I think I think you're right. I think it's a complete continuity error. Uh but <laughs> so Sarah is saying, like, I should have known that he he was using me all along. And you were right, you were right, Cam. And Cam's yeah. like, well, you know, I didn't want to be right, but hey, sometimes Cam's <laughs> right. What can I tell you? And yeah, but then she fucks this in the ass right away. <laughs> like, because she basically turns around to, how did you feel about it when your wife was cheating on you? <laughs> your dead wife. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, like, well, I honestly it wasn't cool. Uh I gotta be like, honest, well, Sarah. I really, I really shouldn't have said that. And I'm like, yes, Sarah, you shouldn't have fucking said that. Yeah, she has all the tact of bitch. <laughs> blitzkrieg and anyway the he's of a dump truck um, <laughs> ben lori so he <laughs> confesses that he never really forgave june yeah. and then he's like how about you go to bed instead of making me feel like a piece of shit for a little bit <laughs> and she's like that's a good idea i'm a little worn out on account of yeah. pitying you for your horrible life <laughs> she gets up though and she's walking with a limp now and yeah. i'm like mm, but that didn't get far Meanwhile, speaking of Dylan, he is being interviewed by Lisa Ann Fellows yep. for her show or whatever. And and Lisa, Lisa Ann Fellows... Ann, she has a line in this which like, I genuinely said the words fuck right off at my telly. Like, I, like, I, I was coming up, but I, I was just like, no, no. Like, this is just... This is someone who... No offence to Canada. This is someone who lives in Canada that doesn't know how expensive property is in New York. Right? Oh, right. Yeah, that 5,000 square com- foot condo. Yeah, yeah. Like, is she fucking Jeffrey Epstein? Like, right. <laughs> the fuck this... And Lower East Manhattan is what she says. Yeah. Like, pound for pound, the most expensive property. And 500 square foot? 
no, five thousand. Five thousand square, square foot. foot. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. No, she does not. No, she does not. Like because she's not in bumfuck nowhere doing this story. If she has that, <laughs> right? Like, what the fuck are you doing here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, like you, you just said, I have a penthouse apartment in New York. That would have been enough. Oh, it, yes. It 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 is a silly uh description. It is completely oh. unreasonable. You're right. Like she would have to be a uh, I, like a multi multi millionaire. She'd have to be a Kardashian. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> and she's just the host of a, a of a news show, as best I can tell. Who's written a couple of books? She's probably doing fine, but I don't know she's that Oprah. It's... You know what I mean? <laughs> right, right. Oprah would have five thousand square feet and on the Lower East Side. Yeah, and she's um, maybe the richest woman on the planet. Right, that's why she has that. <laughs> yes. So anyway, super wealthy Lisa Ann Fellows <laughs> is. <laughs> Super wealthy Lisa and fellows who made that other woman pay the check for their shitty meal for it. That's ago. how you that's how you stay rich, Duncan. That's how you stay rich. You yeah. don't pay for anything. Yeah. And so she's like, so uh, I hear that the police found a kill list with your wife's name on it. What about that? And Dylan is like, hey, come on now, I can't. Like, that's my wife. Yikes. And she's like, all right, all right, hypothetically. <laughs> let's say <laughs> hypothetically i'm going to ask you the same question again right hypothetically let's say your wife is on a hypothetical kill list mm -hmm. and the killer is allegedly going to kill her <laughs> allegedly and then dylan gets real serious and he's like well i want to talk about what we do know i don't want to be talk about hypotheticals what i know is that the last sin is pride and that's the most heinous, heinous of all sins because that is a, an affront to god himself and yeah. she's like, oh, all right, this is absolutely terrible television, but go on. Yeah. <laughs> and and so while he's given this interview, we get our meanwhile with Tom Winston. Yeah. Where Detective Sharma and uh, a pretty lady EMT are in the back of this ambulance as Tom is being taken back to the penitentiary that just landed him in the hospital for safety reasons yeah well this is the thing like i say right. like the, 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 this is the thing that doesn't make any sense so what one of the many many things that like one of the bevy of things that don't make sense like so he was in prison they didn't take him out of prison to take him to hospital for for getting beaten up by a fellow inmate so they're going to take him closer so they can keep an eye on him and this is the Hannibal Lecter scene that I've been wanting this whole season. And that when, if you watch Science of the Lambs, uh, what's his name? Uh, detective or agent? Pembry? Pembry yeah. is it? Yeah, That's Pembry. Yeah. It's <laughs> Jack Pembry. <laughs> Jack Stevie Davy Pembry. Um, God damn it. Jack yeah. Liberty Pembry because we have to goddamn America. Uh, or, you know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> it's like Jack Bald Eagle Pembry is lying there. Um, it's like JFK Pembry. Uh, well, he cuts his, <laughs> cuts his ja face off. Jack Ulysses S. Grant Pembry. Science of the Labs obviously cuts the face off to make his escape, and we don't get the reveal that it is Hannibal until we're in the famous scene in the fucking the EMT driving. In the case of this one, he's strapped there in Shwarma or Shwarmi or whatever his name is, um, is is flirting openly, openly flirting with this this EMT. Yeah, and he's basically he, he, you know he's like uh, he's like yeah this you know really dangerous killer but <laughs> subdued you know because i'm the man <laughs> i'm in charge and she's just like oh he's a monster he's a monster and they, in front of them both tom dislocates his thumb right well he they're during this conversation sharma <laughs> is like yeah that's right there's this whole kill list and mm. this guy's on it along with sarah who may or may not be his daughter like, yeah like, and to, yeah tom totally is just like huh what's that <laughs> And yeah, and and that's the to your point. This is where he's like, you know, crack, 
and yeah, everybody like, right in front of them and yeah. when he does it though he goes <sighs> he makes a noise an audibly large <laughs> noise because he's just dislocating his fucking right, thumb. Just, oh my thumb <laughs> but they don't notice because they're flirting and then he takes his cuff off his hand and then <laughs> claims that the cuffs are too tight and uh, of course that that EMT's like well that's you know like, tight cuffs is you know the the least thing that you should worry about you fucking murderer and I'm like I'm with the EMT here she seems like a, a smart person. And of course, our cop dude's like, you know, I can, it's okay, let me just listen him from here. So he gets up, strangles him, but not to death. Yeah, just kind of chokes him out. Oh, it's a sleeper hole. That can't be illegal. <laughs> that man's got a family. Um, and, so, and so chokes him out, but then the, uh, the lady EMT. The insinuation is he kills her. Yeah, because he tells her, I don't expect you to feel sorry for me because I sure don't feel sorry about you. And then kind of descends on her. And like you said, the implication is that he murders her, but well, does we won't never see her again. Right. And it, it cop again. <laughs> and it totally changes that character. Of course that character is not the same now. Yeah. And like even a little bit that guy is not the same. So So huh? back to Lisa Ann and Dylan who are getting fucked up drunk after this well, yeah, interview. Yeah, well, she, she's she's trying to be all coy with, you know, you were you're holding it on me, and I'm sorry if it was a bit rough with you, but... And then we get her backstory, which includes the line of her fucking palatial palace in the upper west side of Manhattan or wherever it was, where she basically says, listen, my first husband, the insinuation being that there have been many, mm -hmm. um, her first husband... Uh, died in a hit and run uh, or drive by one of the two, and um, she was a like, struggling reporter at the time, so she leaned heavily into this, generated a whole story and career about it. And you know, th her in laws and his family and all the rest they, you know, were horrified by it and they don't speak to her anymore, which is fine because they're still living in poor ass Philadelphia. And me, I've got a 5,000 square foot property in New York. No, you don't. But she's like, so, and you know, you're going to head that way as well because of that book deal I've got you. And he's like, for real? And she's like, yeah, I got you the book deal and the air up and me and you, great things, but you need to be on Team Fellows and get yourself out of this. I think so. Ultimately, Dylan is being tempted back. Oh, he was trying. Just when I thought I was out, they pulled me back and tempted by the book of another <laughs> nice uh -huh. um, so, uh -huh. so he's been he's been wooed this way and it looks like he might well he's gonna well up until the end of this episode he was totally doing this he might still we never yeah know. um but and if me... i was i'll be honest if i was fucking sarah i'd be telling him to do it because you know what I don't want this house anymore. I want a 5,000 square foot mansion in New York. Right. It's already going to be like, it, she's just not in a place to have this conversation with him right now. But yeah, yeah she should be yeah. like, you know what? I'm going to help you out on this. We're going to be partners on this, whether or not we remain married. But hmm. you're going to write this book regardless, but you're going to cut me in on the profit. I'm going to give you an exclusive interview. Exactly. And then neither of us are ever going to work a day in our lives. But, yeah, we're going to be talking about that money. Mm-hmm. Got to hmm. gotta have some good old sense, some good old Irish horse sense. Listen to me, <laughs> Dolan. <laughs> Did you? <laughs> Here's what we're going to do. Some good old fashioned what? Irish horse sense. <laughs> he said Irish whore. Yeah, Irish, Irish whore, whore sense. sense. Yeah. Like that. Really? There are three things you got to know. One, make sure you wash between the legs at least twice a day. <laughs> Number two, get the money up front. That, that is key. Three, make sure your pimp's packing a shillelagh. Is that what? You Num number three. Make sure, make sure your pimp is depositing your money in at least three different banks. That's why it's number three, so it's easy to remember. Oh man. So, oh. so yeah, she has good old fashioned horse sense. Um, 
And anyway, Cam, meanwhile, gets the phone call that, oh, by the way, Tom escaped. Yep, t- t- Tom's, Tom's on the loose. <laughs> <clears throat> and because this show cannot like hold its load for more than two seconds it's just like the teenage boy of television shows where as soon as it (laughs) gets a little bit of tease where it's like oh my god tom tom winston's on the loose oh yeah oh yeah tom winston's out there and then two seconds later we're popping the cork with him jumping into the room and it's like you you can have a scene where it's just like oh my god this guy who's her father but also a killer is out there and may be coming for her. Let mm-hmm. that simmer for two seconds. Yeah. No. Nah. He's right there. He got straight to that house. No problem. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, have we, have we got there? The, we got the penitentiary was only two doors down. I... Yeah, it's just like it's a house next door at this rate. Like, like, there's, like someone needs to do one of those, you know, the, the deep dive Stanley Kubrick like uh videos and try to construct how complicated and disjointed the shining house was yeah yeah, you know, yeah. like the overlook hotel someone needs to do that in waterbury just so i can work out exactly how the fucking town logistics work because it's a piece of shit <laughs> uh, but yeah like so so he shows up a uh, avec gun uh-huh. and he's 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 you know forces cam to essentially don the irons to the irons and kidnaps this is how we know it's definitely at her house because he wouldn't know where Cam lived. So, um, so yeah, so he, he, he fucking kidnaps Sarah, mm-hmm. and they go on the they go on the run, and they go just go the camping. Way. Yeah. They <laughs> well, just... th- th- this is a this is a thing where like the expletives were flowing freely from my mouth during this whole scene where they're having a the heart. They're two steps away from roasting marshmallows, but well, all right. So what <laughs> happens is. He just drives out into the woods somewhere, and they build a be fire. Safe there, right? I don't know what the ultimate game plan is. We stay in the woods for the rest of our lives, apparently. Maybe. And <laughs> and there's this whole <laughs> thing. Never find us here. Yeah, it, it, it's like you know, Brenda never let me go to camp or nothing. Yeah. But you know, I always want to learn how to canoe, but then I <laughs> fell into the water, and and he's like, I would have, I would have taught you how to canoe, Sarah. I would have taught you many things: how to hunt, how to skin, how to taste, and and she's like, "Yeah, I would have liked that, but instead, I got I got strung up with this old hag Brenda, you yeah. know, old grandma." I was like, "Brenda's a goddamn fucking saint! How dare you disrespect her on this fucking show?" It was a better character we had. It's a better Christmas than the old Sarah household. She gave me a carton of cigarettes and said, "Smoke up, Sarah." Like, she's bitching about Brenda, like fan- romanticizing and fantasizing about a life with her serial killer dad. <laughs> right, the woman, the woman whose biggest crime was being a little snarky and telling yeah. you, like, you need to leave. Like, yeah, yes. telling you that you need to leave, which you've decided you have to do, and you know, Dylan's not good for you, which you think he isn't. So, if anything, Brenda's been proved right, like, <laughs> like every step of the way. Brenda was right all along. Uh, in fact, okay, the, she's too good for the show. Well, she was too uh, good for the show. You're right. Too good for any of us, really. <laughs> and so, uh, Tom Winston is like, you know, I'd I'd rather die than lose you. And and that's, it makes it makes a point in making sure that she knows that the yeah. audience knows that, and also when you delve into that logic, doesn't make sense. Nope. And so, <laughs> it doesn't make a bit of sense. <laughs> Deputy Sharma shows up after being choked out uh at <laughs> cam's place and or sarah's place Which where the same place <laughs> where cam is all cuffed up and he lets him go yeah, but, like a comic scene here is like did you get choked out again and he's like oh you know how it is sometimes i, I just get choked i was like look, watching kind of going there's an executioner on the loose there's a Tom Winston on the loose, and Sarah is between a fucking rock and a hard place when it comes to that, and we have time for this bullshit? It's so stupid. All right, so then, after he is freed and back on the loose, we cut back to Lisa Ann Fellows and Dylan, who are even more fucked up, and now she reveals this 
even crazier story Mm -hmm. about how they were interviewing some former addict who had cleaned up so they got him re-strung out on crystal meth or something just to make good news and he's just like that's terrible yeah that's so (laughs) bad (laughs) and then lisa and fellows is like you know sarah's holding you back you need to shake her loose (laughs) <laughs> and be a superstar and then cam calls and is yeah. like and tells him hey sarah's missing because tom winston just but, but he, he says it's, have you heard from sarah or have you right. seen sarah and he's like that well no she's with you and he's like you need to come in the station and immediately dylan is 100 percent sober so far yeah, yeah it is like i gotta go and she's like why are you <laughs> I, going i gotta poop <laughs> yeah <laughs> and so he takes off uh w- then while he's heading to the station tom and sarah are chit-chatting more about all this canoe bullshit yeah. and tom has some kind of seizure and yeah. i and uh, did this happen Maybe. before on the show i don't recall no i think seat. it's the insinuation is it's his head injury uh, yeah all right fine maybe i don't i don't fucking know but this is all used as a ruse for him to destroy our mobile that is literally it. this is the this the best the writers could come up with is tom has a seizure which doesn't mean anything at all just now yeah. i mean we might get revealed in the next episode he was dying or some shit but um even then i couldn't give a fuck uh like he's basically the, the the mechanism here is he's gonna have a seizure so she's gonna phone 911 right um and he's but gonna that's gonna create a ping so that yeah. people are gonna know where sarah is yeah. if her phone's on they can track it anyway right. so we don't even need to worry about that but anyway he destroys the phone and thus he seems to be fine after that well, well then- he's like you have to get out of here sarah leave yeah. run run come on get out of here <laughs> And so she does, she runs off into the woods. Yeah, two seconds after him saying that he can't bear to lose her, he's telling her to fuck off. <laughs> All right, and so let's, because it's important to trace this chronology a little bit, we cut from here yep. to the police station Yes, where Dylan is giving Cam a whole you had one job kind of routine. Yeah, yeah, of like, Dylan the is being pious as fuck here right yeah smug smug dylan has returned and he's kind of right but at the same time i'm like yeah well if you hadn't created a whole website about your wife's dead parents and then married her on the under the guise of potential loving her but also a story maybe we wouldn't be in this position to begin with so i'm yes. just saying if if simbots were coconuts bo um you know what i mean uh uh-huh. So, um, like we're it, as, it, as far as I know in that rhyme, so I don't know anymore. <laughs> yeah, it, it's uh, if some butts were candy and nuts, then we'd all, all oh, right, candy and nuts. I thought they were coconuts. <laughs> uh, candy and nuts, then we'd all we'd all be something on Christmas. I, as, uh, how ah, I was right, I, it's right. been a long time since I've heard that one. Um, my, my, my one's better if ifs and buts were coconuts, and then you just trail off, yeah, <laughs> and, and, and just <laughs> stop talking <laughs> and, and, and then look confused. Um, <laughs> It's like, Someone smell pennies. <laughs> fool me once, shame on. F- fool you me know? and won't get fooled again. <laughs> fool me, but fool me won't get fooled again. <laughs> fool me once, fool me won't get fooled again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so anyway, Cam, uh, like Sharma comes in, D- Deputy Sharma, and it comes in and is like, "Hey, Cam, we got a ping on Sarah's cell phone. She's somewhere out in the on the edge of town." And also, this is the most scenes I've been in this whole season. <laughs> right. Also, remember me? Check me in my new spinoff se- series, Sharma, <laughs> coming soon to the WB, uh, where it's just him getting choked out in every episode. <laughs> <laughs> it's the only way he can orgasm anymore. <laughs> choke me. Come on, choke me. He's, he's going he's gonna, he's gonna to do that. Uh, uh, a real he's gonna have a real caridy outcome if you know what i mean i do know what you mean and that's the finale the season yeah. finale <laughs> season finale <laughs> messy uh, is him so- like passing out while still hanging from the door yeah will sharma survive <laughs> till next season will someone come home and find him um anyway so 
uh, he, basically, Cam is like, hey, you civilians, go look for him. See yeah, if you can which, find Sarah. Mm, really? Mm. Yeah. Hey, look. Well, this is the red herring thing. So we have Dylan, we have Cam, and we have the priest. All, all, right, in all out in the woods. Yeah. And yeah. So it could be any of them, Bo. So when Sarah then is out in the woods and she sees this police cruiser coming by, mm-hmm. she's like, here, here, it's me, Sarah. <laughs> and before the police cruiser spots her, the executioner grabs her kind of from yeah. out of nowhere. And so Tom and Sarah then wake up tied uh, by mm. rope in this sawmill. Yeah. And Sarah's like, Oh no, it's the sin of pride. It's being broken on a wheel. Which and it, we turned earlier on. Right. Um, and and it turns out the wheel in question is a giant, you know, saw, a big a big industrial saw. Yeah. Which I mean I mean we're playing we're playing loose here. But then we've been playing loose all the way through this. Sure. <laughs> and <laughs> and Sarah uh Tom's trying to get Sarah off the hook by saying Yes, yes, she was prideful, but her well, yeah, sin- he asked her. He, he basically says, "What pride is she, what sin has she committed? The pride, and we get the reveal that Sarah tried to commit suicide." Right. Um, it doesn't mean people. anything to anything, but yes, that is well, why sin. because like that's basically Tom's rationale is that that doesn't count. The reason it doesn't count is she was doing it to herself. Right. Um, which nulls the 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 sin argument. It wasn't a, an affront to God. Um, it was her, you know, an affront to herself, if anything. And so that's this is the Bible, no backsies. Yep. And um, the executioner um, does not agree, mm-hmm. <laughs> interestingly enough. And he decides he's going to do it anyway. And yeah, Tom's going to continue trying to wriggle out of this as much as possible. Um, and I was like, just dislocate your thumb, Tom. That worked earlier. <laughs> right. Go with, I mean, it's probably already, di- it's still dislocated, right? The they thing, don't, they the happened like is, 20 minutes ago. Yeah, but the thing, like, the thing about this is, like, we, we, we build up through this fucking nonsense, right? And ultimately, the executioner will untie Tom completely, and he's not got a weapon on him, so Tom could fight. Yeah. He or just do doesn't. Anything. Yeah. Yeah. And he doesn't. Right. It, so. <sighs> So Tom is begging to take her place, Mm -hmm. and then we get the flashback that kind of (laughs) illuminates his motive to a greater degree. Does it? Eh, I mean, kind of. The idea is that back in 1988, he was the, you know, the local reverend. He was a preacher. Yeah, Yeah, he was a preacher. And he's given a sermon, and he has dedicated his life to cleaning up Waterbury, which is filled with gambling and prostitution and drugs apparently yeah i mean who'd have thought right this i mean it's times square in 1978 (laughs) here in waterbury and you just can't throw a dart without hitting a pimp and or a hoe and so he's given this big sermon and then sarah's mom rachel comes in looking all sexy in her suburban sundress Mm -hmm. and She's like, you're doing so much good work, and God, it just makes me so fucking wet how <laughs> how much you're cleaning up this town. And he's like, uh huh. So fucking horny for Jesus right now. Yeah, so horny she's like, for Jesus. Oh my God, I just I love the way that that cross is so hard <laughs> and long at the bottom. You know what I mean? You know what I mean, Father Tom? And he's just like, I know what you mean. <laughs> And he fit, manages to finish this sermon. Cut Just. Off. Yeah. I, I mean, the fact that he does not come right there in front of everybody. He's, is, he's two seconds. Out, he's like, hello, the Jesus, yada, yada, yada. Amen, right? This yeah. has been great, guys. You know, we're going to forgo passing around the plate for donations this week because the church is rich, yo, right? Um, and I, I'm not going to speak to you all. You guys can all go get the fuck in my church. Um, I got a little prophecy of my own. Yeah, I think uh, I, I think that someone someone's gonna rise in my pants. <laughs> rise from the dead. Uh huh. It's not gonna take three days either. <laughs> so cut immediately a to bit them. Of this, uh, confessional wine here on the old communion wine on. Woo, right, it does fresh. the whole curly like <laughs> rubs a tuna sandwich under his arms. Um. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, we cut to we cut to some like physical exercise in a bed. Yeah, um, they, they, yeah, they just immediately fuck, and then afterwards, um, she's like, you know, uh, I I I really uh, I really enjoy her time. Can you stay a little longer? And he's like, no, 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 I got to get back because I feel really guilty about this. What with being a, a, a reverend and all, yeah, and you being not just one of my parishioners but also married and she's like it's cool baby it's cool <laughs> well and, he basically says to her, listen i actually think that i love you right <laughs> and i'm like this is the first time you've slept with her <laughs> like, let's chill out with the love word um, it's yeah he's he's an, a real eager beaver yes and then she kind of says like hey i can't do this anymore yeah but she's not talking to you know reverend tom mm -hmm. uh it's her husband brian who comes in and tom you know rightfully is like the fuck is going on yeah. and he's like no it's cool baby i like it i like it in fact uh let me ask you a question what was your favorite part about fucking my wife is it mm -hmm. her boobs she's got a nice rack and he's like i don't understand what any of this is what is what is <laughs> happening here and he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's See, like, what is love, baby? Don't hurt me. Don't hurt me no more. Um, <laughs> he's, he's like, yeah, I got, I got, look over here in the closet. Check out this camera. You know, my buddy Henry Allen. He, uh, he or Alan Henry is his name. He helps mm -hmm. me uh, distribute these videotapes that I'm making with my wife. Uh, and now you, Reverend, are in a fuck tape with my wife. So you're Wait, gonna so, like, back here's off. The, here's the, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Right? Yes. Here's the thing. Please, I'm trying to work out exactly what the motive i know what the motivation is for this particular tape the motivation is to hold over him as blackmail so he will not reel against the underground porn circuit that's happening in 1988 in waterbury that's right um which how how the reverend got wind of this is beyond me because he wouldn't be watching that sort of stuff but anyway he's he's trying to uh, basically blackmail on that and then i was trying to think about so is this what they do for a living do you just I, fuck tapes and they send them out or i you know maybe it's extra income i don't know uh but i don't know what like, their jobs are yeah but then because like once again you once you just go one level below the surface none of it makes any fucking sense um so she <laughs> so she doesn't want to do this anymore or that's the insinuation or she can't do it with the reverend because she does have feelings for him right maybe. Or something, yes. or something, or some bullshit, because it doesn't make any sense, right? Um, but the you know, I you know, I will you know, if you don't back off, we'll ruin you. Essentially, is the motivation for Tom killing? I, I think the idea is that yeah, there's this kind of montage where you see him in the pulpit preaching. And yep. the idea is that he's kind of living with this shame and also For this eight months, right? This because love she's and, heavily, she's heavily, heavily pregnant when he kills her. Right. So he just lives with this for eight months and then one day snaps. And right. And it just drives him bananas. And he ends up killing, killing Brian because Brian was terrible and then yep. killing uh, the mother, um, you know, also because she was terrible and he can't trust her and all that stuff but he wants to save the baby which is why yeah. at the beginning of the the show we see him cuts cuts the guy's face because he's the guy that's distributing the videotapes that doesn't really work i guess marked him just to be like i, I you know you're in on it but you haven't committed a, a sin directly or yeah. something i don't this is all Fucking just real yeah. loosey goosey but at, at, this is what the whole the whole show has been building up to this we made a point of we're going to find out the justification and meaning behind this and i don't know what this scene is supposed to do is it supposed to humanize tom right but in, in like two scenes before he just murdered someone in cold blood so he can't be that yeah, it, like this is what it, i mean i it, don't get it it's it is the one of the biggest problems with this show is that the characters are so inconsistent. Yeah. That I I don't know I don't know how I'm supposed to feel about Tom. Like, yeah. Like, I still don't know because like even what he does even what he does coming up doesn't redeem him in any way shape or form. No. Home. And and by the way, by redeeming this all happens in like two seconds where we come out of this yeah. flashback and he just and and the 
the executioner finally is just like, all right, I guess, and just lets Sarah go. Yeah. And then, like you said, Tom gets loose. He doesn't fight or anything. He just climbs up on this platform, and he's like, I did it all for you, Sarah. <laughs> and then belly flops onto this saw, which is a fun I did effect. it all for the nookie. <laughs> the nookie. The nookie. So you can take this cookie, Sarah. Um, but he, yeah, and and there's this explosion of blood and stuff, and then cut immediately to Sarah being wheeled into the hospital. Yep. And Dylan shows up, and but Cam's like, you know, stay away. You could be the killer. Wink, wink. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and well, she says even like Dylan tries to speak to her, and she basically tells him to fuck off. Yeah. She's yeah, she's still a little upset. And yeah. then all right, we've got two more scenes left in this stupid. We have two more stupid fucking scenes left in this show. So so scene number one is Sarah waking up in the hospital with nobody around. Yep. So she just gets out of bed and wanders off. Yeah, checks herself out. She goes out. It's a nice sunny day. She goes walking up the high street. Um, she's got a big pair of fucking Caruso aviators on. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and um, right in the middle of the square ball, just standing there, is the executioner. Right. So just she... standing. Just standing there. So she goes to the executioner. Mm-hmm. And she's only a few feet away when cam comes in oh, but, whoa out of nowhere cam just appears yeah he's like sarah back away yep uh he's got a gun <laughs> but it turns out like sarah just grabs the mask and rips it off and there's a mannequin standing what there. i love about this is the attention to detail of painting the, the around the eyes of the mannequin yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's like real dedication to the cause uh, i mean if you're gonna be dumb be well, be she- totally dumb <laughs> She's be slasher dumb. Yeah. Um, there's a there's an envelope addressed to her. Uh-huh. And, and when she opens. There's a note inside that reads The righteous will rejoice when he sees the vengeance. He will wash his feet in the blood of the wicked, and men will say, Surely there is a reward for the righteous. Surely there is a God who judges on earth. And Sarah looks at Cam and says, He thinks this is over. It's not even close to being over. She puts on the, the aviators and it goes, wow! Yeah. Won't get fooled again. <laughs> it's, oh, it's so dumb. And so. Oh, yeah, like she does that and I'm like, yeah, you fucking proved a formidable foe all the way through this season, Sarah. I bet the, I bet the executioner is shitting his pants right now right speaking of <laughs> so we follow cam home and yep. we see his father for a second because this movie do they live together <laughs> i i guess maybe <laughs> i i don't know duncan i just don't know and his father <laughs> is just like hey hey son in a beautiful god created morning so that all the sins have been washed away in this town because I still want this show to think that I'm a red herring. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like for two more seconds, let's let's make sure that we throw some. Yeah, because it's the slasher rule. They set up something and they literally bulldoze it over two seconds later. And uh, and so Cam is like, "Yep, yep, whole town's been cleansed, all right." Yeah, and he just closes the door to his bedroom goes to his closet and pulls out this wooden box in the background goodbye horses is playing yeah. in my mind <laughs> would you open me i'd open me <laughs> and so he opens up this box and inside are little trophies from all yeah, the trophies. other murders you know yeah, trophies the, yeah there's little we did, we, but by the way we never found uh, the other thing i was talking about where they just like correct things in terms of the, the their answering questions one of the things that they very quickly put out there was the the reason dylan was in touch with tom was because of his website the second thing was um the justification for both the deaths of whatever her name was julie and uh trent was the same thing so it was a twofer yeah for no reason at all like one for all the other ones but two for for that one so just because their names were both written in the book that closes that 
satisfyingly not. Um, and he opens his box and he's got all this stuff. We still haven't found the cop yet. Um, although his badge yeah. was in the and I don't think we will find the cop and no one seems interested in finding the cop but we have seen that there was an effigy for that particular sin there yeah. um, he had a snake skin for uh, poor Trent yeah um, yeah there, there's so he he pulls out this bloody cloth and, yeah. and puts it in the box uh, presumably part of Tom's uh, prison uniform yeah and, and then he, he's two steps away from doing the Dexter credit wink at the camera. Right. <laughs> and so at the end of this, it it's just him, you know, kind of closing the box and, and presumably leaving we, the audience, with the knowledge that Cam is, in fact, the execution. Is leaving us with the surprising knowledge, Bo, that Cam is actually the killer. Yeah, yeah, this is something what? that we we talked about early on in the episode show. one. I think was when we hypothesized yeah. that Cam was most likely the killer, um, and here we are, a whole six hours later, finally getting Cam revealed as the killer. <laughs> yes, yes. Oh, fuck my life. <laughs> so, uh, Duncan, Bo, do you have any predictions for next week's episode? <laughs> I predict a riot. <laughs> Will it be a zoot suit riot? Um, I think, uh, I think Dylan is going to step up in the most unsatisfying way for all of us because uh, he's not the hero that we need or want. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that's right. I think that this turns into a situation where Dylan kind of helps save the day they they mm -hmm. sort of strengthen their relationship mm -hmm. he learns the, the lesson that family is more important than career she learns the lesson that she really does love him or something and then it'll be over yeah i, I think she's like sarah's obvious i think sarah's going to crack the case she's going to work out it's cam i think it's just the the, the only thing that might be a curveball is the dad might be in on it I, I think that I think you're absolutely right. I think that's yeah. the curveball is that she she'll find out she'll go to him yeah. and say like, oh, my God, your son is the killer. And i will be like, oh, why, Sarah, he's just doing what he thinks is right for the community. He's yeah. taking care of all of us, you know? Yeah. That, yeah real, so that kind of thing. What do you call that movie again? A dead Zone review. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like, he, <laughs> yes. He's the mother in the dead zone. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I think I think that's going to be the big that's going to be the big reveal. Um, I think Cam will not go quietly. I think Cam will probably die as a slasher movie after. A hundred percent. Yes, she will slasher. kill him. Yes. And and if the father isn't on it, Dylan kills the the father. Yes. And, and yeah, I think that's. I, I think she will probably leave Waterbury, and that's how we will finish the show. Yes, it is going to be like. What do you think we can get for this house? Yeah. Let's get be... let's get the hell out of here. Yeah, um, and detective fucking Schwarmers in the background being choked out for shits and giggles. Um, <laughs> right. I think that's I think that's the yeah. I think I think that's it. I I will be honest, Bo. Two weeks cannot come quick enough to put this fucking thing to bed. <laughs> I'm I'm eager to see where the series goes from here because I've heard mm -hmm. that the seasons are very different from one another. Yeah. So I'm. I'm very curious and I hope like I want it to be equally stupid, but I hope that it's not as painfully stupid. Like this is a real dumb season. Um, yeah. <laughs> the, the characters are just a mess and all, but yes, I agree. I'm looking forward to putting this one to bed. I don't, I don't expect too many surprises from here on out, mm -hmm. but you never know. Like this show is always quick to do something real dumb. It was Brenda all along. Yeah. Like Brenda comes back from her watery grave. <laughs> um like ted dancing and creep show the mayor's revealed to be sarah's granddad that was a story we dropped very very quickly it, after building up quite a bit just none so of that matters at all bullshit. just so yeah. much bullshit in this show that means nothing to no one um, what if it turns out that like the whole town are cannibals and this is all some elaborate ruse I mean, I and... if, if they were smart what well, if they were smart well, oh, well. What, they, what what they would have is some sort of kind of hot fuzz secret organization of people aggrieved by things yes. that have happened in the town and that's all feeding into it and cam is the figurehead who does the killing that 
would be interesting, at least a kind of murder on the Orient Express sort of end and would make me kind of happy. We ain't going to get that. No, no, no. Uh, Duncan, no. Uh, we will be back, speaking of, in two weeks' time to, uh, to, to finish this thing off proper. Mm -hmm. um, in the meantime, where can people find you if they want to get more out of you? Um, they can check out podcasts under the stairs, uh, which can be found wherever you listen to podcasts by typing in podcasts under the stairs, or you can go to the website tputzcast, T P U T S C A S T dot com, where you will find everything I do, including a little show called Opera Omnia, where myself and Bo for season three are going through the collective works of one David Fincher. And we put out an episode just over a week ago uh, looking at the game the third movie in the Fincher catalogue. And whilst neither one of us were particularly bowled over by a revisit to that movie, the conversation nonetheless is great. So please mm -hmm. go across, check that one out. And uh, yeah, I'll speak to you all in two weeks' time. Great. And if uh, if you're watching this video live, uh, join us tomorrow right here on the same bat time, same bat channel. See, like the shirt I'm wearing. Um, uh, <laughs> Because we will be doing yet another list of legends. This time we will be uh, counting down the definitive list of the top 20 zombie films. Um, so that will be exciting and fun and ridiculous. So I'm uh, going to do the next one. Okay. I, um, I will I, I will make sure. You know what it is, but you will just give me the heads up and I will do the next one. Okay. I make a promise. All right. Uh, so we will, be, uh, we will be here at 1 p.m uh eastern time 12 central time tomorrow uh during the day to uh to do that list and uh check out everything on legionpodcasts.com there's all kinds of of new and fun stuff over there including shows like the mystery vault podcast that does uh, like weird and strange history stuff uh just did an episode on on uh, uh crop circles and the philadelphia experiment uh explain what the hell happened with all that and uh and yeah i i felt smarter on the on the back end of those <laughs> um as well as uh the dread familiar which is a new audio drama uh podcast as well so um lots of fun stuff over there check that out thanks for listening to this program uh be sure you are subscribing to the video channel so you can be with us live and for those of you who have been joining us live and leaving uh, questions and comments and whatnot in the chat thank you very very much for for being with us it's a, a whole lot of fun to do it in this format uh and for those of you listening uh elsewhere on the uh audio only feed uh hey thanks for listening to it be sure you're subscribing to the show uh and and all of the stuff that duncan is doing uh so with uh with that there is only one thing left to do to properly in the program around that uh, around here and that is to say to my my good friend and companion say good night duncan my good friend and companion say good night duncan da <laughs> all right we'll see you later everybody <laughs>